Like it's much as Quebec. It's much They're like, oh, je ne sais quoi. Rachel Zegler, if you put the Rachel if you Zegler. put the PCP in the clam chatter on the set of Titanic. Jimmy. James Cameron. Cameron. This is a white star line prepaid call from. Iceberg, right ahead. It's been over a hundred years since the Titanic sunk into the North Atlantic Ocean. It's a pretty open and shut case. The ship hit an iceberg. Case closed. But what aren't they telling us? What if two comedians tried to solve what really happened? This is Truth Tannic. Ahoy! Welcome back to Truth Tannic, the comedy podcast where we aim to uncover what really happened the night the Titanic sunk into the Atlantic Ocean. My name is Blair. And my name is Carly. And today we are doing our penultimate episode, which is on James Cameron's 1997 film, Titanic. A classic. A, a classic. true classic. For the girls. Honestly, we're going to walk through the filming of the movie, the conception of the movie. Some, some little of- hijinks and facts that you might not have known. And that's really it. That's kind it's of a it. fun romp. It's a, it's a fun little romp. We also are... We're, we're being cozy today. Yes, we're being cozy. We have our little scarves yeah. on. We're in a cozy vibe. We're in a cozy vibe. So cozy up with us. Grab Get a, a mug tea. Of, of tea with liquor in it. Definitely. Or tea without liquor in it. Get some kind of peppermint hot chocolate oh, from your local get establishment. Get peppermint hot chocolate. Get one of those hot chocolate balls that you oh, melt, you pour water, I like love hot water those. over it. Yeah. You know, I've never tried one. They're fun because you can also warm up milk on the stove and then pour it in and it's very <gasps> and creamy it and it's sauce. it's very delicious. <gasps> you should get one. Get that. Get a hot chocolate get of some that. fucking sort. Cozy up. And we also mention that we have a showing of the Titanic at Hot Dogs in Toronto. That's right. December We're showing 20th. the Titanic. We're literally, it's a live showing. So if you're in Toronto, come on out. All right, let's get into the episode. episode. Yay. Hello. Hi. Welcome back to Truth Tannic. Oh, the comedy podcast where we aim to uncover what really happened the night the Titanic sunk. Did the Titanic sink or did she slay? Yes, did witches zap it into the bottom of did, the ocean. Did witches brew it into a cauldron? <gasps> is a cauldron the ocean? The Atlantic Ocean is a big cauldron, is, confirmed. Is Mariana's trench a trench of, a, of the vagina of Earth? Yes, I'm Carly. I'm Blair. Bro, I'm sorry, I was just thinking, you sing Mariana's Trench. I was just thinking, like, you, the amount that we fucking learn about the Bermuda Triangle, and it's just not relevant in adult life at all. No, I, I thought that I'd, like, for sure have to take, like, a boat through there. I thought I would, we and would be flying would through die. it, yeah. I, yeah. I thought I'd be going through, like, I don't know where, like, why as a child I thought I'd be going to South America so much. Yeah, is that where it is? I know it's by Bermuda, it's, obviously. It's by Bermuda, but, well, I figured you go through, it's in Central America, I suppose. Yeah. But we're in North America, so to get to South America, you have to go through Central America, therefore over through or in the Bermuda Triangle. I just look at Bermuda, which is not helpful at all. <laughs> okay, where Bermuda, is the Bermuda, Bermuda triangle? triangle? I know, I... <sighs> okay, here, okay, it's from Miami, Florida to, Z- to San Juan, Puerto Rico, oh. and to Bermuda. Oh. I feel like maybe I have, no, you wouldn't fly through that to go to Mexico, so. No, I've never been to Mexico. Mexico's a lot, a lot of fun. I think I'd like it. I went, brag. Oh, it's not a brag. It's, I had I booked this commercial and haven't booked steadily for seemingly 10 months <laughs> at that point after that. But, so it's not a brag, but I filmed that Smart Pop commercial oh, in yes. Mexico City. Yes. And this almost like sounds like a weird kind of overgeneralization, but genuinely every single person I met in Mexico City was the nicest person in the world. Oh, I like, believe it. Everyone was so nice. They're like... um. Lunch is the big meal, not Which is dinner, correct. Which is, it's so fucking correct. Everyone should eat a late lunch. Literally, like and lunch like, as ev- we know no, it at noon exactly. is a lie. No, yeah, it's like, we're going to break at 2.30 and we're going to, it's going to be an hour and a half and we're all going to sit outside together yes. and talk and eat. It yes. was lovely. It was lovely. That's how it should be done. I know. I, I want to go this. back and not work. I like, I, when I said I was going to Mexico City, so many people were like, you're going to love it. And I was like, not like in a bad way, but it's just like, I don't like, think sure. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, really cool. We should, I wish the Titanic sunk in Mexico and then we could go, we could go to Mexico it. City. <laughs> we could go to Mexico City and yeah. see the Titanic. But unfortunately, it's sunk near Halifax. Which is boring. We should go to Halifax. Have you ever so. been to Halifax? Be fun? No, I haven't. I went uh, to tour a university. Yeah. I think we talked about yeah, this. Yeah, you toured Kings. Yes. I almost went to Dalhousie. 
which what is what our life what are our what are our life uh, because kings is like universe. basically an extension of dallas yeah it's it so is so small so many classes are at dallas well don't a lot of people do like first year kings then they go to dalhousie i think that's very common especially because when i went there no offense to our king's college listeners <laughs> there were some weird fucking kids there <laughs> like i think if i went to kings i would have transferred to dal I think yeah. I would have had fun at Dalhousie, honestly. Dalhousie seems like I was going to do a music degree. Fun. I was going to do a bachelor in music um, and then I decided last minute not to. But I was yeah. going to go to Dalhousie because they let you did, do a music and drama degree. Oh, that's fun. And then I was just sort of like, I, don't, I just don't want to do a music degree. And also yeah. Halifax is just like a bit too far. The reason I didn't know? end up going is uh, because we went. My mom was very smart about this. And she was like, let's go visit in like January. Oh, so and it see was it at its worst. So fucking cold. Yeah. And, and dead. Like, yes. There was just nothing there besides university stuff. And I think, like, honestly, knowing my needs now, because I famously went to TMU Go Towers. TMU. Is that uh, what they're called? Towers? No, it's, I think it's like still Rams, but they oh. were voting when they were voting on the new mascots. One of the things was TMU Towers. And I was like, like, twin? That's like, crazy. <laughs> no, don't give people. Would the it be just like a building? Like, someone yeah, wearing like a, a fucking building costume? So stupid. That's awesome, though. Um, That'd be so bad. Because I really wanted to, like, live in the city. And I'm ultimately happy that I went to a school like in Toronto because I do lo genuinely love Toronto so, yes. so much. So happy to live here. Um, but I didn't have a good university experience because it was like everybody commuted and- Yeah, TMU is a bit rough for it's that. It's rough. I'm not yeah. going to lie to you. Like I- All Toronto schools are big commuter schools. Yeah. Well, because the thing that's the problem is like the only one that's not massive commuter is U of T and mm. everyone wants to kill themselves at U of T. Yeah, U of T is bad for an undergrad. Really? I yeah. I feel like- Re Recently, they re like they- Get sent out like a big letter telling everybody that you have to shower before you go to lecture. <gasps> Isn't that horrifying? I mean, but like- You got you it. Should, you no, got I think you. it's a good memo to send out. Yeah. But I think I would have really enjoyed if I ended up going to Dallas. I think it would have definitely put my career back astronomically because it'd just be four years of pure vibes. <laughs> I'm not doing comedy or anything at all. I'm just having the time of my life. Yes. But I think I really would have enjoyed, it's the perfect mix of like university town, but it's kind of, hipster and cool like yeah it's not super normy but it's fun I, yeah. I i think i really would have flourished there but i went knows? to i went to queens and it was very much like you were in just like a bubble for four years yeah, where you're just fun. like you're partying you're going to classes whatever and like for sure i like did not progress in my career but i do think that like, but my, like what cost that's the thing I mean? i'm like, like how much so farther along am i well you are probably <laughs> but I, but like if i would trade i would be behind for like three years of my career if it meant that i just had like an absolute fucking time of my life that's at the university. way i look at it where i'm just like i needed like my brain was wrecked after high school yeah. and i was just like i just want to go somewhere where i can learn and make mistakes and not have them reflect on me when i'm like that's nice my, you know what i mean so it's like whatever like sometimes i'm like oh i wish i'd been like you know in the city when i was 19 i could have done this and that and the other thing but it's like yeah Oh, whatever. Who cares? I had a good time. And the one thing about Queens is that like, I still now like Queens for those of you who are not Canadian and don't care or are Canadian and don't care about university vibes in Canada. Fair. <laughs> which fair. Is so you shouldn't, to be fair. Yeah. Queens is like a very like kind of fancier school. Yeah. They're, which, they're famous for having a lot of racist parties. Oh, yes. They got canceled a couple I of years I got invited back. to the racist party. I did not even consider going. Okay. That's, just that's because awesome. I, I had a, a cast party to go to. Mm, you, can't go, also, you can't go to the racist party. You have the crucible I have, cast party. I have the to crucible to. cast party. I have to go to. I have to go to the... <laughs> What play was it? Was it a Canadian play? Oh, I can't even remember what yeah, it was. Like I would do, I was also crazy. Like I was doing like 10 plays a semester. That's like crazy. it was probably like the Russian play, Hannah yeah. Moshkovitz, like yeah. whatever. But um, I, uh, yeah, on the invitation, I just looked at it and I didn't read. And then I was like, I'm obviously not going to go to this. There are 500 people invited. I'm going to go to my cast party. Yeah. And then the next day I was like, oh, shit. I didn't read this close <laughs> enough. Oh, I should have read that and warned people. <laughs> yeah, I said, don't go. It's racist. <laughs> yeah, for sure this party is a bad idea. Yeah. But yeah, no, Um, it, the one thing about Queens that's crazy and I still can't go to, I was like, no one really wore like sweatpants to class. Mm -hmm. Like it was very like a get dressed up and do things. And I was talking about it with a friend the other day. My friend Lizzie and I were talking about like just like, it's crazy I would wake up like eight o'clock in the morning, like full face of makeup, like wild. mini skirt tights. I mean, I've seen pictures of you in university what? and it's wild. I know, I Who really was she? kind of fancy. Yeah, fancy. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I should return to it. Yeah, I'm I mean, a little less fancy now. <laughs> yeah, I, I think about that too. Where it would be, but at this point, I don't know how to do a full face of makeup that doesn't look busted. Um, you, I'm going to keep saying Ryerson, even though they renamed Ryerson to Toronto Metropolitan but University. But Ryerson just has like TMU. I'm like, oh, okay, we're rebranding. Ryerson is just like, yeah. 
Yeah, like, it's like I. It's like that's the thing. It's like TMU now is like kind of a reputable university. Yes. It's fancy. I didn't go to TMU. I went no. to Ryerson. Ryerson. Yeah, like that's me trying to make a spitting noise. <laughs> but um, I, I will say loved my classes. I had a wonderful, wonderful. Classes. And you had a cool program too. Cool program. Great electives. Like I is did it cre- creative industries. I did creative industries. That's a cool and program. I did an, uh, I did a minor in English. And every single English class I had because I got to just take the fun, weird ones. It was. Time of my life, great <laughs> professors. Like I truly had like great, great classes, a great like academic experience there. I was depressed, so I have no memories of years kind of like one through three. Awesome. But what I do remember- <laughs> I feel similar yeah. about university. No, I <laughs> met somebody yesterday and I knew I like, cause I'm, I'm understudying with her and she went to Ryerson with me in my program. And thank God we didn't meet, but I recognized her name. And I was like, I don't know if we met. If we didn't, it's not about you. I'm so sorry. I was so <laughs> depressed at university. I have no memories. Like I have just yeah. no memories and I'm so sorry. And she's like, no, we didn't meet. And I'm like, oh, thank God. Okay, yeah, great. What on. an overshare, but I had to get ahead of it. Um, oh, it's not that, fan- it's it's definitely, I think, it's not like it's necessarily a fancy school, but because it's in the city, everybody is at, like, everybody goes to class like serving. Yes. Because there's like yeah. a bunch of international students who are wearing like Chanel. And then there's a bunch of Toronto Instagram baddies. Yeah. So you do have to like, most people, you're and wearing- they have the fashion program too, don't yes. they? That's and a lot nuts. of people go to just different programs because they didn't get into the fashion program. So people look really like the, I worked They're a like, lot with- They're like, a professor is going to see me and ask and me I'm, to join I'm, textile I'm, arts. No, exactly. Because yeah. one of the like focuses I did for my, because in creative industries, you do two focuses. And I, fo- I did- um like journalism and writing. Mm. My other focus was graphic communications management, which is like graphic design. And it's also, it's about like, it's partially just about like the publishing industry. It's a lot of books, but it's Mm -hmm. also just about like paper and ink. Like a lot of it is the science of paper. It was honestly, I would have never studied it. Um, Like the paper classes because I had to, they were interesting as fuck. Like learning about the grain of paper. I really enjoyed it. But everybody in those classes is dressed to the nines. Yeah. Um, and I went with my sister because she was touring a school in Chicago. Um, and everybody there dressed, no offense to Chicago, everyone was in fucking sweatpants. And oh. I was like, what's happening? It's like, not even that, it's like the Tim Hortons, like high school girl sweatpants where it's yes, like, they're, roll rolled, they're, they're rolled, they're rolled down. So it's just like your midriff is exposed. Yes. And it's so trashy. And I was like, what? No, no, it's no, such no, no. It's such a uniform though. It's such a uniform. There and are, they're wearing like the Sorel boots oh, and yeah. stuff. Like it was very crazy to there see There are that. some like, sometimes I'll see like American, like it, especially cities like Chicago, like mm. anything in upstate New York. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, that's just straight up Canada. Like it's, you're yeah, just like, yeah, I don't this know This is the how Tim Hortons parking lot yeah, truly. of the world. It's like the way that people dressed when I was in high school yes, yes. is now kind of like people are like, ooh, like early 2000s, like, but it's like, no, you're doing like 2012. Yeah. I yeah, like up, Scarborough Town Center. No, girl. exactly. I, I think that's honestly like a lot of America because I think that Canada is like, Canada, but a little European. <laughs> so we're just a little That's bit true. ahead. Cause I was meeting up with a friend and she lives in New York now. We, I was, I met her when I was in school in Maryland and love her so much, Stephanie, nothing but love and light. <laughs> and love she, you, Stephanie. she went to Stanford. So she like went to school in California oh, and she yeah, just okay. moved to New York. And she was like, I have to get a winter coat. Do you want to like come with me? Just cause like randomly. And I was like, totally. She's like, I'm going to this place. I don't know if you know it. Um, It's like kind of new, it's Aritzia. And I was like, bitch, I know Aritzia. Aritzia. I, I got my eighth grade grad dress at Aritzia. I remember the first time I ever heard about Aritzia was my um, my criminal uncle's girlfriend. Oh, awesome. <laughs> He's a literal criminal. If anyone knows where Brian Crabtree is, message me, we're looking for him. Brian Crabtree Brian is Brian Crabtree. most no, I'm de- what Rob, a you criminal can put name. this like, in like, what the a criminal podcast. Name. Brian, Brian Crabtree, Crabtree is a you name owe of a my mother money. <laughs> I'm not fucking around, Brian. But his girlfriend okay. at the time, he, she broke up with him, obviously, because he's a criminal, oh my God. Brian. Um, <laughs> she, bless you. <laughs> we, we're having a soft day today for the viewers. Yes, if you're podcast. not watching the video, we're both wrapped up in our little scarves because I got the flu for a week and then I got a sinus <laughs> infection and then I, my eczema flared up on my hands. So I'm not doing well. And Can, I'm just having yes. a sensitive week. Oh, I'm having a sensitive week. Just so I'm in a, a rancid weeks. mood. Like I'm in a oh, bad yeah. mood. I know. I'm on like, you know, when you're just kind of like perpetually on the verge of tears. That's, That's exactly where I am. been all week where like, it's just like, I'm so glad. Like not even that I'm sad. It's just that my body so badly wants to release 
something. Yes, there's just that it's, is it's emotionality. It's, it's emotionality. Feeling. Last night I went to that uh, like opening. And I was with Reese, my boyfriend, and like literally at a certain point, we were, we were there afterwards for like 45 minutes. And I was like, let's go. This feels like the peak of when yeah. I will feel good. Now somebody's going to say something that's going to upset me, even though it's not meant to. I know. I've realized that they're like, I, I've been trying to become more like conscious of my social battery. Yeah. Because I do really think that I am an, like a true ambivert. Yeah. Like I love being alone. I love being around people. It's just like very much like. I have to be in, you know, like, I, I think most people are ambiverts. I don't think I'm, like, unique in this. Yeah, it's probably a spectrum. Yeah, exactly. But, like, I've been trying to get better at, like, being in a social event and being, like, no one's going to, you know, threaten me with a bomb <laughs> I if know, I that's leave fucking this real. event yeah. early. Or even just saying, like, I've realized that, like, a lot of people will say yes if you're, like, I don't really want to stop hanging out, but I don't want to be in this environment anymore. That's really how I feel. I'm sure you've noticed this because I... And it's the, oh, it's a really good tip that my therapist, my therapist is very good at being, if I'm like, well, I don't want to do this. And she's like, well, why don't you just, even if you don't want to do it, like do it. Like I remember one time I was like, I can't get work done because I'm in bed all the time. And I know you're not supposed to do work in bed. And she's like, just do work in bed. What are you fucking talking about? Yeah. Um, but like, I find it really hard to hang out in big groups like that. My social battery just gets like and immediately also, drained. Hear. Yeah, it's just I overwhelming. I think I have a lot of like COVID baggage where I'm like, I'm inhaling people's yeah. disease. It's just very stressful for me. I'm definitely like m more introverted than I am extroverted. I'm just, I'm I think a, I'm I a sensitive too. soul. I'm more a sensitive, so. <laughs> highly sensitive person. So my, <laughs> but I'm just like, I'm so fine to just like, I love hanging out in like a group of one or two. Yeah. Let's have a group of like the three of us will just go. So I've learned in groups like that being like, yeah, I don't want to be here. Be like, you guys want to go? Like, yeah. what if just what the are, three of what us if leave? we just went to like a different place? That's not Especially, here. Especially like I found like I, I hit well, a point like in the last stuff year. Too is industry like, stuff Somebody's going to say something. And it's they're going to say something that's going to ruin your entire month. And it's going to be so impassing. No, I know. They're just going to be like, yeah, I booked a McDonald's commercial. And then I'm going to have to not only reckon with the fact that that doesn't matter, but the fact that it affects me. Yeah, exactly. And it's just humiliating. It's like I both don't care about this. And for some reason, it's the most emotionally effective and thing that someone's told that me. That makes it worse. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you're reckoning with like the double whammy there yeah but um oh yeah aritzia yeah so yeah my my criminal uncle's brian girlfriend. crabtree brian crabtree if you're listening he's not listening to this but you never if know. you are or if anyone knows where he is his girlfriend his ex email us at truth at gmail.com gmail with, with your sighting the whereabouts of brian crabtree he owes blair's mother money he owes everyone money <laughs> He is. <laughs> He's a crook. <laughs> anyway, but uh, yeah, he, um, yeah, she told me about Aritzia. So I always thought it was like business wear. Yeah. And then fast forward, like that must have been when I was like a, like a kid kid, like yeah. a child kid. And then fast forward like years and years and years and all of a sudden Aritzia is trendy. And it does feel like now I'm seeing it on TikTok, like, ooh, like Aritzia Hall. And I'm like, I thought we were all like done with Aritzia. Yeah, that's a Canadian thing. Aritzia. I know, I go to Aritzia for very specific things now. Like it's not, it's, yeah, we're kind of done with it, I think, as a culture. And that yeah. like, it serves the same purpose in Toronto, at least that Brandy Melville served like seven yes. years ago. Where it's, it's like, like a status The girls that thing. wear it, they yes. want to wear something. They want to wear like a white tank top and jeans. And I get that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's like when you go to Montreal, and I do think that like Montreal is the most Montreal. Someone else said this. This isn't an original thought, but someone said that like Montreal and New Orleans are the two places in North America that have like true culture of themselves. Yeah, and I do think that's true. Like whenever I go to Montreal, I come back and I'm like, there are like five kind of out there fashion things I'm about to try. I'm about to try in a real way. <laughs> All my friends yeah. are going to kind of be weirded out, but it would make sense if we were in Montreal. Definitely. You know, because they all dress so well. They yeah, all and dress they, and so well. They all dress so well. They all dress very unique. It's like, it's very, it's not like, everybody has a style. Like they yeah. they don't follow those trends that you have a style. Truly, they, they have a style. They I mean, I famously dressing. love Montreal. I love you guys, I but I Montreal. hate it. Like I, every time I'm there, <laughs> It's too, because my brain is melt. Like I'm a true Torontonian, which means I'm a piece of shit. I'm a piece of garbage. <laughs> where know. it's like the fact that I'm in a fucking second cup in Montreal <laughs> and it takes me 18 minutes to get a drip coffee because they're on European time. Yeah, for they're sure. They're fucking vibing, they're, they're chilling, out. they're taking a smoke break. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm used to being in Toronto where like if, you, if the machine that you're ordering your coffee on doesn't <laughs> serve you within 30 seconds, you can sue. <laughs> You know what I mean? So it also it's the same thing where it's like, I'm already so mad that everything's so slow and chill. And then I'm also mad that I'm not cool and European <laughs> and just chill. Enjoying exactly. It. <laughs> I'm just so mad. Or like, I remember I went 
Cause my grandparents used to live there. And I remember like one, I went last winter and children were just playing in the snow by the side of the road. Incredible. And I was like, you're gonna get tetanus. Where <laughs> are your parents? Like it's, it's much as Quebec. It's much more than like, it's I je ne sais quoi. Yeah. No, um, I'm such a tourist. Like I love Everyone's that about so Montreal hot where I'm just too. like, I love the hot people. Everyone I love in Montreal how slow is fucking is. hot. I go in for a coffee. The barista is like, do you want to smoke a cigarette? I'm like, yeah. I you want know, that. I want to be later. that way. Yeah, but my brain is broken in like the opposite direction too. Yeah, where, you like, don't I want, yeah. I still have like the chaotic Toronto brain, but I'm also like, as soon as someone suggests something insane, I'm like, yeah, that's Let's what I wanted that. to do. Let's yeah. do it. Like I can't. Say no to an insane suggestion. Yeah. I would move to Montreal in a heartbeat. I want to. It's so beautiful and the rent is so cheap. I just wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah, I couldn't. I no, you couldn't. You couldn't leave your beautiful home in Toronto or I, your beautiful- Toronto home. is honestly ma made for me. Like it's the perfect no. mid-tier city of like, it's not as stressful as like New York or LA. Yes. There's social security nets in place, <laughs> but I still can like really feed my Americanisms of things happen. Can, I can get things very fast. Yes. I do. I, I talk a lot of shit on Toronto, but I'm such a like, I'm, I'm such a hardened Toronto girl. Like people look at, like I look like I'm from Toronto. Yes. Like I really, you, you got know what the I mean? eyes, you got the hardened I've eyes. I've got the eyes. Well, this is the thing that I feel about because <laughs> people constantly clown on Toronto. It's very easy to clown on Toronto. And I get it. Like it's expensive. It's like, it's not oh, it's a perfect insane. city. Like I get it. Also, like if you are living by the waterfront, like of course you're going to fucking hate it. It's, oh, yeah. it's condo it's city. It's awful yeah. down there. But like when you ever, if you ever look at like the ranked cities in like North America, Toronto is always the number one, like best city to live in. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. I'm like, it doesn't get better than this unless you're moving to like Paris. Yeah. And let's say it, people in Paris, they don't want the influencers that are moving there to move no. there. No. And that's the one gift of Toronto is that it's not chic enough for TikTokers to kind of parachute in. <laughs> Like imagine how yeah. pissed you'd be. If I was living in Paris, I'd be so mad. Oh, I'd be so mad. I'd be like, oh, I wish I could get a coffee, but unfortunately yeah. somebody's doing the renegade <laughs> in the middle of my local cafe. <laughs> somebody's like romanticizing my life while I'm on my yeah. way to my job. Yeah, it's it's weird. I do think that like we need more media that like romanticizes Toronto. Yes. Um, because we are missing it. Like, that's why I feel like we love Scott Pilgrim because it's like, oh, finally, Toronto. like Toronto as I like want to see it. There's a lot of that in literature, like very, sh there's a lot of really shocking stealth Toronto writers that are very, very like- Do you know, it's actually crazy. It's like because of so Margaret many... Atwood, because they started yeah. an, a, like a Nisi press or whatever. Yeah, She's yeah, talking yeah. about like, it was her generation was like, we, cause it was the same way with Canada and everything else mm. are, are, of now like with comedy being like, if you want to be an actor, if you want to be a comedian, you've got to move to the States. And it was like that with writing too. And they were like, no, we're going to stay here. Yeah. We're going to start indie presses so that people can get published regardless of whether or not they get a deal with Penguin Random House. Yeah. And you can stay here. And it's fostered a literary scene where we've got Mavis Gallant, we've got, fucking Nobel Prize winner, Alice Munro. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got Margaret Atwood. We have all these fantastic Canadian writers that are creating yeah. art. And now there's a freedom to stay here because there's things in place. No, there really is like, and there's even low key, like I'm reading The Lost Daughter right now, okay. which is rough to get through if you have any sort of mother issue. <laughs> but it's 160 pages. I've been reading it for a full week. Right. Because I've been doing 15 pages Yeah, you read time. three pages, you have to close it. And you yeah, have to close think. it and deep breathe yeah. for a while. But like, even in that, like her daughter's moved to Toronto. Like yeah. even outside of Canada, like there's a lot of reference to Toronto, like in the zeitgeist. But um, yeah, also Emily R. Austin, who wrote um, Everyone in This Room yes, Will Someday Be Dead. Yeah, she's, she's, she's Canadian. Ottawa. Ottawa. And she's fantastic. If anyone needs a book to read, this is a fantastic. And it's a good book to get you like back into reading if you yeah, get into the yeah. slump because it's kind of fast. Um, but fabulous book. And then she wrote a novella called Oh Honey, which I just read. Okay. It was really good. Well, it was like, very Mona dark. Mona Awad is Canadian. Yes, yeah. And she's fucking phenomenal. Like there's so many great Canadian authors. I think like Canadian authors and Irish authors both have yes. something where it's just like, it's yes. very like- There's an identity. There's an identity to it where it's like, you can tell like, this is a Canadian book. This is an Irish book. Like just in the way that they like really meander on things that like American- A lot of Canadian books are very English weird authors And it's a lot of women writers as It's well. a lot of women. I, I noticed that like not even intending to, but almost every book I've read this year, other than I read a couple of James Baldwin books. Yeah. And then like maybe one or two other assorted men, everything else I've read this I That year always happens with me. I find it really yeah. hard. And I understand this even like, I actually agree with the men's rights activists in this, where it's like, it is kind of like misandry with me. 
where I find <laughs> it really hard to read a book by a straight man. Like I can't relate. It's mm. so like I started reading M. Uh, I think it's called Elizabeth Hardwick. I just picked it up at the BMV, but it's like Sounds Tales really of New York. It's so she's from like she wrote basically spanning from like the 1940s to the 1970s, and she's a communist. And she okay. wrote wrote like short stories about women in their life. And it was like I re picked it up because I went and specifically being like I want to read something that's kind of glamorous and about New York. Yeah. Um. And it I can't read it about men. Like I just can't. Real. And I know that to be like, I actually agree with the, like with the people who always <laughs> comment on my videos being like, you don't read anything by men, that's so offensive. And I'm like, no, this is offensive. No, it's true, it's true, like, it's true. In this case, like I find it really hard, but like there's a lot, a lot of great contemporary Canadian authors and I just love it. I yeah. love that they're just like around and they just hang chilling. Out. They're chilling, yeah. they're hanging out. Oh, Marlo Granados. Oh, nice, yeah. Who wrote Happy Hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and she published with Flying Books. It was again, just like another like indie publisher here. That's fabulous. And then you get like, you sell the American rights or whatever. Yeah, but, like, and you're done. It's great. I think books are nice in that way. Like, I kind of wish Very TV true. had a bit more of a pipeline like that too. Like you make it, and I, I know that it exists, but it's a bit trickier. It's not it, the same. Like, like a book yeah. can be published by an indie publisher and, and then they still just sell it to have, whatever. Yeah, you can still have like um, mm -hmm. Eliza Clark, who I was talking to you about earlier, mm -hmm. she wrote, Penance, which is one of my favorite books that I've read this year, but before she wrote Boy Parts, yeah. and it's like w published with an indie UK writer, a mm -hmm. uh, UK publisher, like very, very small, small release, and it just went like viral on yeah. TikTok, and I did read it, and it's like genuinely a phenomenal book. Oh, she awesome. didn't do like a master's or anything in literature. She was like an, she's an MFA, like she was an art student. Oh, cool. So it's written very much like a pop literature book. Like it's written um, very easy and very interesting, but it yeah. is kind of still like, it's still uh, like very lit fic and it's oh, phenomenal. Cool. And she got like a massive deal after that first indie book went, like yeah. you can, it's just a lot easier because it's not visual, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you, it's just about how much you get paid. Like if you get a deal with an indie press and they pay you like $15,000 advance, mm -hmm. as opposed to if you get with a massive press and they pay you $60,000 advance, the book still looks the same unless yeah. it's a really, really indie press. Whereas like the difference between a show that takes $50,000 to make it $100,000 to looks make it so looks different. physically yeah. different because the aesthetics look different. Yeah. So it's just tough. But you know what else went viral? The Titanic. The Titanic. Transition. I love it. So I'm excited for today's episode. This is a fun one. I also think we're feeling kind of a little bit lower energy. We're feeling a little cozy. Definitely. And we're talking about... The 1997 James Cameron epic Titanic, which is my favorite comfort movie. rainy day comfort movie, which is kind of insane to say in the way that it is such a disaster film. It's a real disaster <laughs> film. <laughs> like it really is. I think I've said this on the podcast before, but I brought one of my best friends to see when they put it back in theaters mm -hmm. at the 25th anniversary. And she was horrified after. And I was like, wasn't that amazing? Wasn't that fun? And she was like, that was terrible. Why'd you make me watch that? Yeah, <laughs> no, I honestly, terrifying. like, I, I think I said this earlier too on a different episode, but I watched it for the first time this year. I'd never seen it, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, that's and nuts. And when I watched, cause I was like, I don't really care about, like the love story didn't really appeal to me. At, yes. Uh, in the ether, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And then when I watched it, I was just like, oh, this is just fucking insane. Yeah. Like it's like, I was there for the disaster of it all. And it's yeah. wild and it's, so amazing because it's still in the time of practical effects. Mm -hmm. So it just looks amazing and it yeah. feels like you're there. So it feels really scary mm -hmm. because it's like water is filling the hallway oh, it's and crazy. it's water. So you're like, yes. oh my God. Well, that's the thing that's crazy about it. So like, if you haven't seen Titanic, literally truly pause this, go watch go it. Go watch it. It's podcast. on Canadian Netflix. It's on Canadian Netflix. It's also everywhere. It's just, it's so easy to find Titanic, which is such a blessing. You can probably find it on Vimeo. Yeah, you can probably find it. You can probably find it on YouTube. They probably upload like a full Titanic just, to YouTube just, every just, two hours, gets yeah. taken down. It just gets, cut. it's mirrored. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's flipped. Yeah. But um, no, truly just like, a, like such a fantastic movie. And like in researching this episode, I like really- Realize how actually insane of a project it was. Yeah, it's a true kind of like um, underdog story because yeah. it was so over budget. Everyone thought it was going to be a massive flop, mm -hmm. not one of the most iconic. It's probably one of the most iconic movies of this like, oh, century, easily. right? Like, well, it was the highest grossing movie worldwide for a long time until it was beaten by Avatar, which was also so James, a James Cameron, Cameron is slaying. Movie. He's slaying, um, and it also just is like. We'll probably be repeating this a bit, but like it's so like smart that they just really like James Cameron did a good job of just making it about the humanity of yes. the shipwreck and it not feels just like, real. It feels real. And I do think that like 
you know, I, the love story is like cute and you have like Leonardo DiCaprio and like, you know, good blah, acting. Blah, 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 blah. Good and, acting. Yeah. But really, it does kind of remind you like, oh, this is what it means to be human is to have these like big kind of like, you know, emotional experiences. And then to parallel that with like the ship is sinking, it's like, oh, good, smart. Good it's smart. amazing writing. I think good that's smart. some of my favorite like narrative, my favorite narrative device. And I didn't really, I wasn't able to identify it until I read Beautiful World, Where Are You by Sally Rooney. Because mm. they mm -hmm. talk about this a lot, but it's literally like the world can and is falling apart at any given moment. Like, yeah. At this moment in time right now, something horrible is happening and lives are being lost. And in like the, the like the the emotional like effect of that is almost too much to even like metabolize. Yeah. And even though that's happening, all we care about as human beings is each other. Yeah. Like, which is and really that's, beautiful. It's really beautiful. It. It's it, stuff like that makes me that's life affirming to me. Even if life is insane and hell and bad stuff is happening, like the fact that the things that we care about the most are our relationships. That's phenomenal to me. That's amazing. And I think that that's why this movie is able to last as long as it has, mm -hmm. because there's people that are there for the romance, but also like there are just little snippets of this that are so impactful to me in this movie because you're reminded that this horrible thing isn't just happening to like little cartoons or like black and white yeah. people. It's like happening to people who like, it's happening to like, husbands and wives it's happening to best friends it's yeah. happening to like real human relationships well even like in the movie jack kind of has this like little cutesy friendship with this little girl yeah that's like if you guys know what i'm but like it's this little girl cora who's like this third class passenger and she's like this little kid and mm -hmm. they like dance at the third class party kind of thing and it's just like, oh, for sure that child dies. Yeah. You know, like it's so, it, like it's so, like it's it just not looking good you, for Cora. You know? Yeah, it's looking bad for Cora. It's like the Hunger also, Games. I remember when my mom yeah. was reading the Hunger Games, she was like, I love Katniss's friendship with Rue. And I remember oh, yeah. literally being like, it's like don't, don't get attacked. Rue is going to die. Like, you know, the convention of the story is it's a death match, right? Like people are going no, to die. No, they're all going to die. That's the crazy thing about the Hunger Games too. Also, I hate to make this comparison, but Squid Games too. Yeah. It's just like, oh God. No, I know <laughs> that awful. is such a good. Obviously, it's like being like it's like literally the most famous TV show yeah. like of all time at this point. That's what's just crazy. But that's the thing. It's like it's so sad because it's people. Yeah, it's not. It's obviously like the convention in and of itself is sad. It's like a disaster. obviously the Titanic sinking in and of itself is a sad, sad. thing. But when you water it down to a personal level, mm -hmm. that's when that humanity. Like humans have such a great capacity for empathy when. Mm -hmm we see other humans in distress. In and we do way. really reflect narrative too. Like, yeah. I, I feel like, you know, if we put something in it into a narrative, like in that way, a Titanic, it's like very like, we're like, oh yes, like this is something that I too feel in my life, you know? Definitely. And and you're able to think about it in terms of, oh, that could happen to me. That could happen to my friend. Yeah. I always think about that with like the draft, like, yes. and like World <gasps> War II, especially a lot. And especially with Vietnam, because one of the weird, and we're not going to do an, a season on this because it's not even funny. Like there's no on joke the to be made, the but I was War. obsessed with the Vietnam War oh, as yeah, a kid. Yeah, like yeah. obsessed randomly because I read The Outsiders. Oh yeah. And in canon, S.C. E. Hinton has confirmed that Soda Pop Curtis, the hot brother, dies in the Vietnam War because he was course. drafted. Of course. Tragedy. Which is- uh, Will also, Vietnam not take our hottest boy? <laughs> our hottest outsider. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fucking on, take two bit. Who cares? Yeah, I don't care about two bit. No, Soda no Pop? crap. They're also, side note, they're making an Outsiders musical and the- not oh, okay. to be disrespectful, but they're like Dear Evan Hansen it. And I'm like, no. it's literally in the 60s. Like, why is there no doo -wop? Like, I want it no. to be Grease. Do it. I will say, okay. It's terrible. literally them being like, great expectations. I'm like, this no. is Ben Platt. No. That's like Dogfight, the musical had a mm -hmm. similar problem where it was like, you can make this more 60s. You know what That's I mean? That's fun. Like, we like the And also 60s. Dogfight, what a, a horrible story line. <laughs> Just a nightmare. Let's talk about it. Don't look up. Dogfight is, uh, they're like challenge each other. They're all getting drafted to Vietnam and then they challenge each other to freaking, you know, blah, 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 invite the ugliest girl they can to a dance. Um, what? That's the yeah, plot that's of that the musical? plot of Dogfight. And then, like, of course, the lead guy falls in love with the ugly girl he's invited, who's played by Lindsay Mendez, who's beautiful. So that doesn't really in make the any original sense. Broadway cast. Yeah. And in the movie, I can't remember who she's played by, but another beautiful woman, or whatever. And um, it, from it's, um, from Merrily We Roll Along. Yeah, something. something well, she's in Merrily We Roll Along now. Oh, with, Lindsay Mendez. Yeah, with yeah. Jonathan Groff and Daniel Radcliffe. Oh, what a good show! So I'm I'm going to see it. I, <sighs> I there's I haven't booked the ticket, but I haven't booked a flight. 
We should on go to my, New York. No, like we should on go to New York. God, I want to see that. I want to go to New York. I want to see Daniel York. Radcliffe just rip Franklin Shepard Inc. Yeah, he's playing, he's- um. Oh, he's perfect for he's it. He's Franklin Shepard Inc. And apparently <gasps> it's godly, like that he slays. Oh my he's God. He's also, talk about sexy. He's- He's so, so hot. sexy. He's so hot. He's so Anyone who's hot. like Daniel Radcliffe isn't hot, I'm like, I actually don't I actually have time can't for you. even talk to you because what you're saying is so fucking crazy. Did you hear he funded that whole documentary yes, about, about his a stunt double who got who, injured? Yes. That's oh, oh, what a beautiful soul. I love Daniel Radcliffe. I love him so much. He apparently I was talking to a friend and apparently like he was filming some movie here and somebody was just like ended up hanging out with him at like some mm. Queen West bar. And they're like, <laughs> he just was like such a stoner and smoked weed and hung out and was the nicest guy. And I was like, <laughs> fuck. No, he really seems normal. And it also like is really telling that like Daniel Radcliffe just had like alcoholism, like severe, severe yes. alcoholism so young that like, I feel like he's just has like a way better, like not that having alcohol alcoholism was for sure a bad thing in his life, but like, so just to clarify, but like, it seems like it's just like, he's got like a way better perspective on like what matters compared to like a Definitely. lot of other like child stars of his era. Yeah, his parents were theater people too. And I think there's value in that because it seems like now he's yeah. like, well, I've gotten all the money I'll literally ever need mm -hmm. so I can have a kid and my kid will be fine because of that yeah. Harry Potter coin. <laughs> so Potter. now I can like just do Broadway and do like, like weird, weird indie movies. films yeah. that like for sure could not afford like a he just name likes, like him. Yeah, he just likes acting. No, he really- Which is really beautiful. You can tell he really enjoys it. And also like his parents didn't want him to go into acting. Yeah. Which just makes me feel like they're more I watched normal. the Harry Potter reunion, <laughs> which like don't watch it. Why you need to watch? There's nothing there for I you. I like that they used uh, like the flashback clips of J.K. Rowling. Yeah, they're, they not, didn't they're like, we're not, doing, we're not doing any new no. interviews with this no, woman. No, because she's going to get on the <laughs> mic and go, if I would go to jail for my beliefs of yeah. trans people. If I did this eighth Harry Potter book, the Harry Potter in the yeah, trans like bathroom debacle. <laughs> It's like, okay. <laughs> Suzanne Collins would never. Suzanne Collins would never. She was would simply never. never. Um, but I remember he was talking about how like the reason he wasn't like even that good of a child actor, but he just had like a haunted look in him yeah, as he a really child. Did. Like <laughs> he just had like the eyes of somebody who had seen some shit. And he does. You look at pictures of Daniel Radcliffe as, as a, a child, child. And you're like, oh, he witnessed a murder. And it's almost like, do you, have, do you believe in past lives? Yes. For sure he died. yes. He died as a child factory worker. Yes. In, in Victorian and then before London. Then he and his was soul like, was like, I'm going to go back to London. He until he was 80. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, for he's sure. had like one long life. Yes. A horrific short life. And now he's Harry Potter. Yeah. He's a middle of the road soul for sure. Definitely. Not super old. He's not super old. He's not, not super young. new. Rupert, like his soul Rupert came back. Grint is new. Rupert Grint is new. This is the first life Rupert Grint soul Yeah, for lived. sure. Yeah. Or, you know what, it's so funny. I feel like he could be, I feel like a lot of people who I feel like are like, oh, that's a new soul, mm. could actually really be old souls in yeah. the way that like, you've done, you've had all your really meaningful lifetimes and you're just, you're just here vibing. To, you're just here to vibe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I but, guess I was bringing up, apparently, I haven't heard it yet because I haven't released a cast album yet. Daniel Radcliffe absolutely rips on, there's like a patter song that his character sings about Franklin Shepard, his friend, because he's upset that Franklin Shepard is oh, yeah. like very, uh, like commercial. And apparently mm -hmm. Daniel Radcliffe like rips it. Like it's awesome. And it's apparently it's phenomenal. So oh. I'm very, very excited I'm to see I'm obsessed. Wait, I know the song you're talking about. And, and I'm forgetting he the name. keeps humming along. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's called writing, writing a song. song. Mm -hmm. Then I love Marilyn Monroe. I love. I who sings now? You know, I love now. You know. I think that's um Jonathan Groff. No, or maybe really? it's Lindsay no, Mendes. It must is be Lindsay because it's a girl. It's then a girl it's Lindsay Mendes. Yesterday is gone. See the pretty countryside. Merrily, Merrily we roll along, roll along into a dream. A dream. There's, a, there's a great musical, uh, a great documentary on Netflix called "The Best Worst Thing That Never Happened," and it's a documentary <gasps> about the first cast of Merrily We Roll Along and it's phenomenal. I feel, you should like watch it. I feel like I watched that stoned years ago and should it's, go back to it. It's a great- Cause I have like memories right. of it. They talk, like, it's, hmm. it's by Lonnie Price oh. who in the original Broadway cast, cause it's it, the original Broadway cast, it was a complete failure and the entire cast was children. So Lonnie yes. Price was like yes. 17. So Lonnie Price is playing the character that Daniel Radcliffe is playing now. <laughs> An adult Lonnie Price made this uh, documentary like using oh all of these like old, clips and stuff that he made, that he had when yeah. he was in the musical and like interviewing all these people later. And what's really beautiful about it is Merrily Roll Along as like a theme, it basically goes back in time. I'm saying, I know you know this, but I'm saying it for the people listening. No, you it, gotta. It's about this group of friends and it opens with Franklin Shepard, one of the main characters speaking at the high school reunion. 
as a child. And then it goes to like the end of their friendship and the end of their life and then goes back in time mm. bit by bit. So you see these people who are very jaded become very optimistic about their life and it goes back Aww. and forth. So it's really cool to have the musical be about that. Um, and the original cast was all kids. Oh, and then so to have also them as an adult, it. it's happening. Whoa. Isn't that cool? I freaking And also love Jason that. Alexander at like 18 was in the original cast. Oh my God. Yeah. It's really fun. It's a phenomenal documentary. That's literally nuts. I should go back and watch that. You should. I really it's should. really, really good. That's incredible. Um, I guess I was talking about Vietnam because I was comparing the Vietnam War to the Titanic in the sense yes. that I oftentimes think like what it would be like to just have lost all of the men in our lives. Yeah. To war. That's yeah. crazy to think about. It's actually, it's actually nuts and very, very sad. Yeah. So it makes sense why you would want to, you know, make a movie about the Titanic. Also yeah. because like it hit at such a sweet spot of like uh, what we talked about in the Discovery of the Wreck episode mm -hmm. of like, this was kind of Titanic mania. Like people were going crazy for the Titanic. And even before then, people were obsessed with the mythos of it. And then they discovered it's the so wreck. It's so evocative even as a, as a term. Like I, I, a lot of times in comedy will reference the Titanic just because there's very few things you can say the Titanic. And everyone and it, gets it. Everyone knows exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Everyone's on board. Everyone's yeah. here for it. So we'll talk about the conception of the film first. So James Cameron, this guy loves shipwrecks. Okay. And I guess at some point in his life, he switches in university. He's studying science. And then he switches to the arts because he's Love like, that. I want to make movies. But Amazing. Like, ever every since parent's I, dream. Every parent's dream leaves the sciences. Into goes, the into arts. Into the arts. Yeah. Like, I'm going to make my movies. But he was like, I have this like need to explore science. Like I, I like I have, like I feel restless. Yeah, like, he loves science. Like I love science. I love shipwrecks. I can't relate, but I'm happy for him. I know. Honestly, I can relate a little bit. I'm, I'm always like, I want to go on, I would go on an archaeological dig if anyone let me. Fun. If anyone has an archaeological dig I can join. There's, okay, I would so love, archaeological love dig, to join. But I did a ghost tour with our <laughs> totally producer. Totally the same thing. <laughs> no, with our producer, Rob. Because so we were filming a proof of concept for like a, a, a spooky show. And they also have this like dig site that's a haunted dig site that you can go to. So I feel like you could sign up for that and go do that. I remember it, was, it really made me laugh because the guy who was leading the ghost tour was like, it's an indigenous like site. Mm. Um, and he was like, the ghosts are really angry and very active. And I'm like, of course oh. they're really active. They're really angry. <laughs> yeah, you put them on a ghost tour. You're digging them up. <laughs> Stop digging that up the ghosts. That sounds, I would be pissed. Yeah, whenever people are just, oh, like the curse of Tutankhamun's uh, uh, tomb, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, you opened King Tut's fucking yeah, grave. It's like, leave it alone. What, what, what did you think was going to happen? It's literally nuts. So anyway, James Cameron sees the Titanica documentary that they film at the site of the wreck. Love. They go down, they film all this footage, they make the blah, 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 blah. And then he went to Hollywood and was like, I want you to fund me going down to the Titanic in a submarine. Absolutely. That was how he approached it. That's awesome. He And he has said that he didn't even really particularly want to make a movie. He just wanted to go dive down to the shipwreck. So he's like, mm, and I love that. That's actually a man after my own heart. We've all done that where you're like pitching something because you want to do kind of one fun aspect oh, of it. And you're like, yeah. I guess I've got to do the rest of it. For sure. It's but, the Adam Sandler of like, yeah. I want all my friends to go on vacation with me. So I guess we're making Grown Up 7. Yeah. <laughs> so we really want the, you know, turn of Century Fox to pay for our water park tickets mm -hmm. and put us up in a fancy hotel. And I can only respect him for doing it because I will no, do that immediately. Absolutely. If, if I had the means. Oh, yeah. Easily. 100%. Even now, I'm like, how do we get Titanic on the road so I can go to New Orleans? Yeah, yeah we're like, I, what if we pitch that the Titanic sunk in Mexico City? Yeah, exactly. And what if the truth, what if we started we the Patreon about, yeah, we'll do season three for about the Mayans or something. Yeah, so we can no, go we on a can, vacation. We can go to Peru. Yeah. No, that's the Aztecs. Aztecs is Peru, yes. Yeah, I think sorry. the Mayans might be Central America. That but is Central I don't, America. But I don't want to say. I think it's Central America. Sure. No, I think, I think you're correct. I, again, I went to school in America, so like, yeah, you're I, just hanging on. No, honestly, like anything <laughs> geographically, like literally this is, I'll do, a, this is my impression of every single like class in America. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's America mm -hmm. and the rest doesn't really matter. Doesn't communist. Really matter. Com no, communist. I, I've told you this, that like Commies. I went to France <laughs> in high school. Cool. And this is when I was still in America. And um, they were like, you have to, if you're in like Europe, People really don't like Americans there <laughs> because they're jealous of our freedom. Yes. So just and that say is true. And say you're Canadian, if people ask, because I won't be mad at you. 
um, because they are jealous of our freedom. But you were Canadian. I was Canadian, so I was fucking, I was vibing. <laughs> Thinking, looking back on that, I'm like, Fucking, oh, yes, because Paris, France doesn't have freedoms. Like, what do you- <laughs> Felt like they invented the, the revolution. Iraq war. Like, it's the Iraq <laughs> war. Everyone's so mad about the Iraq and yeah. Afghanistan war. Everyone's upset with your oil interests, America. Yeah, it's not your freedom. Like, it's such yeah. a funny narrative that you don't realize when you live there, because everyone's just like, they're jealous of your freedom, and you just believe it, because you're like, I'm six. Like, I don't have a reason not to believe this. <laughs> and then you become an adult, and you're yeah. like, they have freedom- in Canada, they have yeah. freedom in most places. Yeah. I don't think they're jealous and of they're, our freedom. They don't have a We're just really army. loud and we have, yeah. we have vested oil interests around the globe and we're destroying the world. And you invented McDonald's, which is the oil interests of the diabetes. Masses. Yeah. So. Oh, beat of the masses. Oh, beat of the nation. Like, where's my big back? Who cares about oh, who cares about my society? Oh, I made big back. Oh, I made big back. I made big spray. This is our like, that's our like contemporary play. <laughs> Just gremlins eating Where's McDonald's. my Big Mac? Where's my Big Mac? Where's my Big Mac? Where's my Big Mac? And then somebody goes, wait, does anybody want to read The Odyssey? No, I want my Big Mac. 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 Instagram. Put up all real. Instagram. 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 We do a dance. That would be awesome. A big tap number. This is fringe. Yes, we should do this. We should just next year at Fringe do Merrily We Roll Along. We really should. We should just go in, pretend like we're doing a satire piece on McDonald's culture in America. No, and it's That we just whip out Merrily We Roll Along. Doing Merrily Roll Along. We're doing a full Sondheim musical with no rights. And it's on double speed because we only have an hour. Song. I think that there's, I, because I'm not a vocalist. So if you're not really a singer, I think most people who aren't really singers, but are in the performing arts have in their brain locked and loaded like three songs that they can sing if they For sure. have to sing. Like if somebody gun to their head is like, we're at a cabaret and yeah. somebody dropped out, we <gasps> need you to have sing. Have you ever done Modern Major General? No, I should. I could really see you I should, killing yes. Modern Major General. One of my songs that I used to do for like a lot of auditions was um, I'm Not That Smart from the 25th oh, Annual banger. Putnam County Spelling because it's barely singing. Also, it's so And it's just low. comedy. I know, it's How not, do you it's, hit it's those like, notes? I'm not that smart. My sisters have been telling, been telling me that for years. years. That I'm not smart. And it's like, that's all it is. They Jesse Tyler Ferguson fro- originated the role from Modern Family. Modern Family. I love him. He was also in Cocaine Bear. Really? Yeah, he gets killed. I, he's awesome. really, really, really he's funny. So he's so funny. A very he's good comedic act- actor. Actor. Okay, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, Titanic. <laughs> no, your three songs that you have to whip out. And then I said, I want to hear you sing Modern Major yeah, General. Yeah, Modern Major General. Major, I, I am the learn. very modern love of Modern, modern Major, Major General. General. And information um, vegetable. I feel like, and this is so cringe, but I and we talk about Hamilton on this podcast every week. I know. But like, I really feel like I could slay You'll Be Back. Oh, yeah. I think yeah, I yeah, really yeah. could do that. And the final one, I think I could do Franklin Shepard Inc. From yes, you could. Any patter song. I'm very good at like yeah, you're, you're like a, you're fast and they don't you often, enunciate. And they don't often have like high notes. Because yeah. the whole thing is just. Honestly, I listen to this podcast and I'm like, Carly is such a good enunciator. Thank like, you. Like I really think it. I'm That's like, really I'm like I feel like I've gotten better at enunciator. Un- enunciator. The, never mind. If I ever really, never, never mind. mind. Fuck Enunci- me. I feel like I've gotten better at enunciator. I'm a better enunciator. No, no, no. Um, I am fully delusional in my head that I will be the first female King George on Broadway. What? I, no, but I love I, and that. And I'm in. I, I have this. Belief. I'm not, and I'm not going to stop you from. I'm not going to stop believing it until they cast like Queen Latifah no, to do I it. You that, know, I'm like, I have that feeling with certain things, and it, that's why I get really sad when famous people die. Because there's, I have no doubt in my mind. If you put me on a Hollywood set, all of these famous people would love me. Oh yeah, that's how I feel. So like, obviously, like I'm making a death about myself and just strap in mm. and we'll see kind of in the edit how we feel about this <laughs> but when Matthew Perry died I was oh, really sad because I was like I feel like we really could have been friends no and you really could have I feel like he would have really, really liked me. when Bradley Whitford dies that's gonna be tough too because oh. I really feel like Bradley Whitford would like me yeah and if Bradley Whitford or your daughter is listening yeah I think we would get along yeah that's how I feel like I feel like I get along really well with Robert Pattinson. Oh, I could see you really would. I just feel like we You're have You're very weird. Sometimes I'll thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you. It's a compliment. It's a compliment. It's no, a compliment. It's but sometimes I'll weird. read an interview where people will be like, oh, he seems so like unapproachable. And I'm like, he's ex- like exactly who, especially on like a set. Yes. That I'd be like, I am going to only eat my lunch with you. Yeah. Kind of vibe. Definitely. 
And I feel like we're not really like, there'd be no sexual tension between us. Yeah, you'd just be friends. We just, like, I really feel like I get along well with him. Yeah. And I do have it in my mind that we'll work together someday. Yeah, I just have these beliefs. Like, there's certain people that I just think would love me. Mm -hmm. So when they die, but you're I get probably really right sad. about all of them. I think so. I oftentimes in my brain, like, really think if I, and obviously I'm not famous enough, don't have enough clout to do this, but I think I really, like, if I got the Selena Gomez role in Only Murders in the Building, like, oh. I honestly think that Steve Martin and Martin Short would be obsessed with me. I think that Martin Short, well, I think that Steve Martin would literally like really take you under his wing. That's what I, I think feel. that Martin Short would be more like keep you at a distance, but really care for you. Yes, because Martin Short gives me the energy of like a man who has no interest in being friends with younger women. No. Just in a, not in a creepy way. Like he's just like, I respect you. No, we'll talk. yeah. He definitely, I because I've heard um, like, rumors because he famously did Second City here in Toronto. Famously. And he came and saw the show like five or six years ago <laughs> and he came backstage and all he wanted to do was like relive and talk about Second City. And when he did the show, mm. like he's obsessed with it. Like all he wants yeah. to do is because it's like one of those, I think there's a lot of performers like that have like a couple of years in their brain that were like before they got really famous that they're yeah. just like, that was the fucking time, man. And you're kind of like, you're climbing the mountain and I don't think you realize how good climbing the mountain feels. Yes, and I think you're for him, it. Second City is that. Mm -hmm. So if I was ever on set with him, I'd be like, I immediately have an in. Yeah. Like I know exactly He's what like, you want to talk do about. do you know any Second City Toronto? So I've been understudying at the Second City <laughs> Toronto. And then, he, and then just let him talk. Yeah, just let him kind of monologue. Yeah. That's how you talk to old men too. Like you, you just find no, you your common them. interests and then you're like, tell me what that was like in the 70s. No, that's literally all it is. And at any That's how I talk to my father. No, exactly. I'm like, oh, I've just been thinking a lot about Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Do you want to monologue want, at me? Would, do you have any opinions? Any opinions on, on this? On, any opinions on that? Yeah, that's all it is. <laughs> No, which is, which is great. Another old man, James Cameron, pitched. <laughs> in this, was it kind of like a sandwich pitch of like, I'm going to do a movie or it's- Yes. So but he, it's like, but he wants to go down and see the show. But he wants to go down and see the okay. show. So he goes to 20th Century Fox and he pitches the Titanic. The 20th Century Fox mumbo. Yep. From Smash. Oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah. I thought you were just doing a little ditty. That would be fun. No, but that's no, fun. I'm singing, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm singing a song that's from Smash. NBC Smash. NBC Smash. Second, second Smash. time it's come up. So, hey, still less than Hamilton. Yeah, I, yeah. That, nothing is going to get close no. to Hamilton <laughs> in terms of references. At the end, we should do a like a conglomerated just every single time I'm Hamilton is mentioned Hamilton. and with, like, with a little number, like a one, two, three. And it's yeah. going to be disgusting. The amount of times specifically room where it happens has been room sung on this happens. podcast about the Titanic. About the J.P. Morgan owning the banks. <laughs> That's true. That's I was like, so he owned true. the banks. They're in the same spot. <laughs> well, you can't say he owned the banks and not expect me to say he's in the same he's spot. He's in the same spot. Anyway, so. The Titanic. The Titanic, the greatest boat. You've so, got a great tone. Thank you. You have a great tone. I don't know if I do, but he, <laughs> you do. Say it back. Say it back. Say it you back. have a great tone. Say it back. Say it back. I have a great tone. Say it back. Say it back. Do I have a great tone? Yeah, you have a great tone. You have hey, a great Finch. tone. You have Finch. a great tone, Finch. Finch is wearing a little sweater today, just so the people who aren't watching the video know. And it's fucking adorable. Yeah, she's adorable. And Finch is, is a Hudson. dog. If this is the first episode you're listening yeah, to. Yeah, sorry. This is Finch the dog. She's wearing a Hudson's Bay sweater. And she's a little chihuahua. Yeah. She's, she's also, a little colonial. She's colloquially known as Finch Tina. That's my nickname Finch -tina. for her. <laughs> oh, that is a good nickname. I know. I, Finch Tina. I'm it's just like, you that. know, when because it was just me and Finch alone when I was watching Finch. Mm. So you talk to your animals just because you talk oh, to yeah. them. And I just started being like, Finch Tina, how's Finch it going? Tina. Like Christina, I guess. <laughs> Finch Tina. I don't really know. No, talking to animals, like the nicknames evolve really fast. Exactly. Like, just my cat always has a new what's, nickname. Yeah, what is, what's your cat's nickname at this moment? I feel like I've been calling her like, um, like Bubby. That's cute. Like Booby. Booby Bubby. Hey, Booby. Hey, Booby. Hey, Booby Bubby. Yeah. But she was stinky for a long time, even though she actually smells really good. Aww. But I'd be like, a stinky, stinky. I realized with my cat that I would be the worst mother ever because literally all I would ever do is compliment her on her looks. Yeah. I was like, how beautiful. I know. You're so pretty. And pretty's all that matters. <laughs> I know. Sometimes I'll look at my cat and just be like, your cat is You're very, model. very pretty. She's a gorgeous cat. Yeah. Like, she really gets by and looks alone. She's stupid. Yeah. She's stupid, stupid. My stupid. cat is mean. Like, she has such a tone problem. And I know it's because cats meow <laughs> when they're modeling their owner's voice. Cause like cats don't meow in the wild. So when they meow, it's what they think human speaking oh, is. Oh yeah, yeah. And she sounds like such a bitch, which means I sound like, a, sounds bitch. like, like a bitch. It must be that. She's like, meow, meow. like she's I'm like, <laughs> it's crazy. Jim's not Jim, my cat, her real name is Jim. Um, she is not very vocal. 
And that's nice. But lately she started kind of meowing. And the other day I was picking her up because she likes to be picked up for like exactly 30 seconds. Yeah, and every then she day. wants to be put and down. She, and she goes like, meow. Oh, it's like, it's so musical. I'm like, you She's also have mewing. a stunning meow. But that's the thing. Like she'll go through and she'll be like, meow. Oh, that's all she does. That's so it's sweet. It's so funny. No, my cat was like Sophia. She lives with my parents right now. Oh. Um, but I think she might come live with me and Reese. <laughs> but she'll just walk into the room and be like, meh, meh. <laughs> like, and you'll be like, what's wrong? And it's just her saying, hello, good They're morning. Just saying hi. But you're like, what's the matter? <laughs> but if you sneeze, she'll go, meow. Oh. She blesses you. It's very, very <laughs> sweet. So I cute. love her. I love that girl. She's so thin. I don't know what to do about that. Some cats just are. She just naturally is. And she's old. So I think that's part of it as well. But like I leave her food out all day and you can like see her hip bones. And I'm like, girl, I know Jim, a little bit. Jim was getting kind of fat. My mom came over and started fat shaming my cat, oh, which was that's rude. so rude. She was just like, Jim's getting fat. You can't see it when she's standing. But when she sits, she looks like a blob. I was like, oh, you're being so mean for no reason. Yeah. This is, oh. First of all, body positive. Uh, yeah. Let's first of all, can you, Jim can you be not who she wants to be? Yeah. All bodies are beautiful. So all let's bodies say are, that. especially if you're a cat. Yeah. Like, who cares? Like, Jesus. Like, you're, are you trying to fuck your cat? Like, yeah. Come on, like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Whatever. So I've try been trying to get her like a good eating schedule and she's not having it. She's yeah. like, where is my well, grazing plate? Well, that's exactly. Whenever we like finish recording, you're like, oh, I got to go to the convenience store and get food for my cat. And then we end up going to nine convenience stores <laughs> because they don't have the specific food your she cat will eat. Friskies, turkey and cheese. Yeah, they'll have friskies. <laughs> but you'll be like, oh, it's a, it's a seafood medley. She's not going to eat this. <laughs> no, she won't eat seafood medley. She hates that. Turkey and cheese. Well, let's talk about the gym. real seafood medley is the the, the Titanic. Yeah. Those people became sea. seafood. They became seafood. Woof. So James Cameron, Jimmy Cam, goes to 20th Century Fox. He pitches it as Romeo and Juliet on the Titanic. Honestly, that's a great pitch. It kind of is that. And the studios were like, hmm, we kind of want- Also, there's no such, there's no better pitch that- communicates that you have not written the script. Oh, for sure. You're like, what if it, it could be this? <laughs> it could be this. If I see the Titanic, um, maybe I'll get inspired. We're going to do that and we're going to put it on. We're going to do Romeo and Juliet on a boat. We're yeah. going to do Romeo and Juliet in space. We're going to do Romeo and Juliet. Truly Romeo and Juliet in space was Avatar. We which have was not other movie. gotten over like Romeo and Juliet as a narrative. Like it's, no. there's something about it that we love and it's such a middling play. But it's also like, man, when people say Romeo and Juliet, they're like, they're, like they seldom actually meet. Like people no, forget what happens. They in mean Romeo and star-crossed Juliet. lovers from different families or like classes. Yes, they don't exactly. mean like the 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 blood war. They yeah. don't. They don't no, mean children. No, <laughs> like, yeah. the, it, there's no like faking of the death and yes. then whatever. It's yes. just the story. There's no like I'm trying to remember because I get now all my Shakespeare's get muddled together. Benicio, who's her? Who's our? Uh, who's our uh, Romeo's friend? Oh, oh, um, oh, oh. You know what I mean? It's not Banquo's- Not Tybalt. Macbeth. Tybalt is the, is the cousin. And then his, oh, oh, he's his Queen Mab. Queen Mab. He yeah, does the Queen who's, Mab. what's his, he dies. He gets stabbed. Yeah. Uh, Tybalt kills, oh my God. I would, Mercutio. Mercutio, yeah. Mercutio, he does Queen Mab. That's a great yeah. speech. Queen Mab, the masturbation. Which, yeah, what, um, if you could, if you were able to be cast in any Shakespeare role, male or female, Oh, I really would love to do a Lady Macbeth one day. You would slay that. Thank you. You would do really well. And you know what's so fun is that King Macbeth was like the the like original Macmillan. Oh, yeah, that's cool. It's like I think it's like there's a couple of names like that that all come from like Macbeth. The same, sect. yeah. But yeah, awesome. so there's like a real like I feel very like connected yeah, to like, Macbeth, even though there's no real connection at this point. Yeah, but it's like that's it's, cool. Yeah, like it was one of his like. You're in his like clans or whatever. Yeah, it's some sort of like blah 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 yeah. blah something. I don't understand. I'd that love to do translation. the Twelfth Night. Twelfth Night. Yes, it's one of my favorite ones. It's a great comedy. I love the like. I think it's a play that could really lend itself to like being modernized. Yeah, in a really great like. It's like when you watch some like it hot, which is another, which is a movie with like a lot of gender bending yes. and like cross dressing. And when you end up actually watching it, it's like weirdly very modern in its view of like tra being trans. Yeah. Because, because it's just them being like, at the end, he's like, th there's like an old man who's pursuing one of these guys who's dressed as a woman. Yeah. And he keeps being like, it'll never work. We won't get along. And he's like, we'll make it work. And they go, I <laughs> snore. And he's like, I'll get earplugs. And she go, and then she goes, I'm a man. And he goes, no one's perfect or whatever. <laughs> like, it's like very weirdly yeah. like, 
progressive. And I think that you could really modernize the Twelfth Night in that way and have like a lot of fun with like mm-hmm. the mixed mistaken identity of it all. Yeah. I would love to do not um Viola, Sebastian. Yes. Be yeah, a lot yeah, of fun. yeah. Oh, that'd be so fun. Or there's the one, there's the guy that they are pranking who they like sent him the letter and it's like, I I'm your secret admirer. Wear like bright yellow socks and all that stuff. Is this a different play? This is the same play. He's like oh. a minor character. And I remember we did that um monologue in high school. That's and I remember fun. loving it. Cause he's just like reading this this like uh prank letter like that's no. telling him to act stupid. <laughs> It's a great play. I should reread that play. I um I, I did really a scene from one. The Merry Wives of Windsor in um in uh university and it's objectively a terrible play, but I think it could lend so well to being modernized because Definitely. it's just um it's just who's the, girls. the who's the fool from oh um, Falstaff. It's yeah. just two women pranking Falstaff. That's awesome. For like two hours. That's super fun. And I'm like, I feel like if you did this just like raunchy, like style comedy. A bridesmaids. Like a bridesmaid yeah. style Mary Wives of Windsor. I think that could really sell. Yeah. You could really sell that. I've, I haven't read Much Ado About Nothing, but apparently that's. You would do well in Much Ado About right. Nothing. You, you should watch great. the David Tennant, Catherine Tate version. Okay, I will. Much Ado About Nothing is quite good. All right. So Jimmy, Jimmy Cam. Yes, I'm gonna stop now. I have to stop. It's <laughs> oh no, on it's, me. it's fine. Like it's on, it's my fault. Yeah, it's I'm always, asking you questions about things that are objectively not related to what we're doing. <laughs> no, but I'm so interested, and the fans need to know. The fans need to know what Shakespeare plays we want to do. Yeah, exactly. So they can look forward to them. Exactly. Pressure because everyone wants a new ad- adaptation of a Shakespeare play. Yeah, we're not done with it. Everyone's been asking for it. Yes, I mean. One last thing, and then I will just only talk about the Titanic. <laughs> Those like that, like re- realm of like high school kind of like grunchy comedies mm. that are shakes updated Shakespeare plays are fucking fabulous. Oh, bring them back. Yeah. Bring them back. Do I have 10 Hamlet. things I hate about you? Um, what's the one with Amanda Bynes? That's the She's 12th the man. Night. She's the man. Fucking great. So good. Such a good, and like Lion King, yeah, Hamlet. Like, Oh yeah, not a teen comedy, but still but also like, a, teen a great, comedy? a great modernization. Oh, fabulous! And then I know. Lion King Two is Romeo and Juliet. <gasps> I didn't even realize I haven't that watched that in so long. And uh, I'm one, Lion King one and a half. is Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. What? Yeah, it's wait, the, that's so it's fun. The side, it's a side story. It's a side story. No it's not Rosencrantz. Yeah, it's Rob is right. It's, it's Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. It's not Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. The play, the existential oh, just, play by Tom Stoppard. It's just the Rosencrantz and Guildenstern yeah. like, side plot. <gasps> wait, that's so fun. Isn't that fun? Yeah. All I remember. I need to rewatch Lion King too because all I remember is that it's he a great lives one. in you. Hela, 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 he lives in me. Hela, in the hela. Anyway, so Jim's, hela, Jimmy, 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 okay. Jimmy, James Cameron. He lives in you too. James, James Cameron. James, James, James in me. James, James, James Cameron. Cameron. So he goes, blah, blah, blah. He wants Romeo and Juliet on the Titanic. And they they're, go, absolute. They're, no, they're like, we really want action scenes. Like in your other movies, like we really want these like, you know, uh, like alien type stuff that he was known for. Because James Cameron was a pretty big director at this point. Yeah, he did, yeah, he did Terminator 2, he did Aliens. So like he's known. For that. And he's known for making these like action movies. And he wants um, to make Romeo But then and because Juliet. he's kind of hot shit, they're like, okay, fine, we'll fund it. We don't really want to fund it, but we'll fund it. But we love you. Because we want to have a long relationship it's with Phoebe you. It's Phoebe Waller-Bridge getting paid three million over the course of a couple of years to produce nothing. Yes. Exactly. So it's like we just want you on our payroll. We want you to make yeah. stuff for us. We want we want you. We want to have you on retainer. So they're like, yeah, we'll basically do whatever you want. And then he also says to Fox, he's like, you should promote the film by uh, you know, promoting the fact that I am diving down to the wreck of the Titanic. And 20th Century Fox was initially like, we'll use CGI and visual effects to make the wreck look, uh, you know, real. And he goes like, but wait a minute, you're already spending X amount of money um, for, you know, to make all those special effects. You could just spend a little bit more, send me to the wreck. With practical effects. Practical effects. And then you can say, wow, we sent this guy to the wreck of the Titanic and promote, like, you know, get a ton of publicity off of that. It's very realistic, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is- smart honestly That's smart yeah. and then also james Cameron's goal at this time is simply to go down to and see the, the titanic. titanic yeah that's all he really wants to do what would be movie your is a back burner. what movie like what would you pitch as a movie oh um, just because you want to go someplace just because i want to go someplace 
Ooh. Like you, you could also be the thing of like the, uh, like you were saying before, the Adam Sandler of it all of being like, let's all go to a water park somewhere and yes. be my friends. Yeah. yeah. I feel like probably it would be like, like a remote island or That's something. Fun. Like some sort of remote found footage. Yeah. I would really, I know this movie already exists, but like the way I would beg on my hands and knees basically to just do like a Christopher Guest best in show movie with all my friends <gasps> yes. where it's all improvised, but it's just like, I feel like I know the funniest people in the world who are like world-class improvisers, give them a little character breakdown and mm. we go someplace and everyone gets a silly costume and we, yeah. I would love to do that. That's incredible. Yeah. Would you do it on any like specific location? I, don't, I mean, obviously, you know, I famously have been writing a Christopher Guest style improvised <laughs> short film about uh, former gifted kids. Who oh, are that's coming, incredible. They're coming back together. Um, it's like a experimental program where they were the most gifted kids in the city. And then 10 years later, it's like, yeah. where are they now? And they're all flops. Yeah, for sure. Um, so maybe I do that. I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of a location, but like, it's hard to be funny in a beautiful location, I that's feel true. like. Do you know what I mean? I would Maybe I'd do it in Toronto and bring- yeah. The, tr the romanticization of, of Toronto. Toronto to the screen. You know what I always think would be funny for like a Christopher Guest style movie is like tour guides of decrepit like Scottish castles. Very fun. I think I'm still thinking about Macbeth, but wouldn't that be funny? No, that would be a lot of fun. I think a lot of times like weird jobs like that. There's a reason yeah. people write their pilots almost exclusively about what the weirdest job they've oh, had. Oh yeah, I was a haunted because tour guide for a summer and fun. that was the weirdest people that's I've fun. ever met with respect, haunted walks. <laughs> with nothing but love, love you guys. and guys. With respect. nothing but love and light. You guys know you're, they take, they're like very like weirdest to compliment people. Yeah. Like me. Well, we went when Rob and I, again, we went to film that like spooky haunted ghost walk. They were like, we were running late and they called us and they were like, are you coming? And we're like, yes, are we so late? And it's, they're like, okay, just look for the guy in the black hat. And we're like, oh, great. <laughs> like it's going to be a ball cap. No, no, he's wearing a monocle yeah. and he's in a top hat and a waistcoat. Yeah. And like, don't say black hat. <laughs> it's a top hat. Say the guy in a costume. He looks like a ghost. He looks, he's dressed like a ghost. <laughs> black hat. <laughs> Say top hat. Say top hat. Say top hat, Monocle. Say Monopoly say Man. Say waistcoat. Yeah, say look for Mr. Peanut. Yeah. Say look for Mr. Peanut. He's going to show you the ghost. Yeah. God, people are so stupid. I hate people. So James Cameron. Don't talk to me Dave's before down. my coffee. <laughs> Dave's down. <laughs> Dave's down. Dave's Cameron. Dave's down. Dave's down. He Dave's down to the Titanic. He David d down. Dives. Okay, Finch, are you good? <laughs> okay, Finch is fully encased in a blanket. In a blanket, yeah. He dives down. So James Cameron, he dives down to the Titanic a bunch of times. At one point, they crashed into the Titanic, <laughs> literally, damaging it. They fucking And this is like in. a different company than like the Ocean Gate. Yeah, he's got- Because so he's this been is like way a, a, before Ocean Gate. But it's like a safe thing. Yeah, this is like, it's a safe thing. It's very scientific. Like he's going down with the scientists. Okay, that makes me feel yeah, good. I'm like, like they're not gonna let the scientists die. Yeah, it's not just like him and a bunch of random Famous people. last words on the challenger. That's the teacher. Well, they're not gonna let the scientists die, <laughs> so it'll be fine. <laughs> the rocket will come back safely. Yeah, for sure. I'm and just And then the challenger happened. My favorite event in all of human history. You love the challenger in it's a way that so, is confusing to no, me. No, I know. There's something it's not even funny about it. It's just, I'm obsessed with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like no, my adult version that. of the Vietnam War. Yeah. Which in the rest of the world, they call the War of American Aggression. <laughs> as they should. Like, Is that what correct. they call it? Yeah, because it's American aggression. <gasps> so true. Yeah. Honestly, straight facts. And the reason, did you know, that more people, a lot of people died in Vietnam comparatively to other wars is because of the draft, because drafted soldiers are inherently less skilled and careless, so they die oh, yeah. more. Yep. And I believe it. What I didn't know that was a fact, but that really makes What do you think about the draft? Okay. Well, you know who thought about the draft? James Cameron. Really? <laughs> no, probably not. Okay, but we need to keep <laughs> he's talking. From, he's from Kapiska King, Ontario. Yeah, so keep he's not getting drafted. Dry lips ought to move to Kapiska, Kapiska King. Anyway. What the fuck? <laughs> it's the play I keep talking about. So at one point <laughs> they crash into the Titanic. They damage a bunch of it, which is crazy. And it is. It, it, it was That's just very funny. Something that should happen. So he starts writing the screenplay, researching crew and passengers and all this that. stuff. And he's getting and historians it's also review his timeline. Note, like it's not like now when you can just Google shit about the Titanic. Like he's got to go no. to the record. He's got to go. He's got to the read records. the like old timey yeah. cursive. That's impossible yes. to read. Yeah. And speaking of Harland and Wolf, the Titanic's builders. Um, opens their private archives to Hell the crew. Yes. And they're like, yeah, take all our building plans, whatever. So they build like scale models. 
Um, oh, also, James Cameron was very influenced by A Night to Remember, which was the film made in the 50s about the Titanic. And that's the, the really realistic one. It's a really realistic one. And he took full chunks of dialogue. He took full scenes. He took the party in third class. Like, he took very awesome. liberally from this It's the Amy Schumer movie. school of uh, writing. Yes. <laughs> Titanic begins filming uh, July 31st, 1996. Starring beautiful Kate Winslet, who we were just talking Gorgeous about because I just Kate watched Winslet. The Holiday. She's like a painting. She literally is the most beautiful woman the in the world. The fact that at this time, there were so many jokes being like, she, about how her body and how like they're calling her fat and not, you're like she's she's thin oh no she's thin and she's gorgeous she's yes. like she's such a like rare beauty definitely you know like really truly it's, is it's, a rare it is beauty. a real tragedy of instagram face that we don't have a lot of people who I like know. she doesn't have like super thin lips but like she looks different than other people like well instagram face is already going downhill like there yes. are so many people who just like yeah your face looks weird I, okay and here's my question people who are listening let us know in, in the comments of the youtube uh video or message me mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to me like anybody can get lip filler that doesn't immediately migrate south of their lips into their chin yeah it, do people, are there people who do get lip filler that doesn't migrate and it's just such good lip filler that I don't notice? Because every single, I see it constantly. Like, and I don't want to make these mm -hmm. people feel insecure because like you got to live your life. But like, I immediately notice when there's like a migration of lip filler yeah. on, towards the chin. Yeah. Yeah. I think that like also people, you can make your lips look bigger with like facial posture. Yeah. You know, or just, just do Overline that. it. Like you can Overline just your lips, use the plumping lip gloss. Like, I don't understand. Like, why are you... Or get like a tiny amount of filler. I know. Well, I'm saying this and I famously a couple weeks ago tried to get preventative Botox and then found out <laughs> it's $1,700 and was like, never mind. Is that really? I, yeah, I called um, them and because I went, obviously I think it's like if you want to get good stuff, yeah. it's expensive. Mm -hmm. And the receptionist was like, well, the Im immediate consultation is $400, but if you end up getting it, then that will just be added to the $1,700. Uh, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to check I'm just gonna run those numbers. It's like, <laughs> obviously I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna get bangs when yeah, my no, forehead good. gets too fucked. You know? You're good, honestly. I And then no. I just didn't wear makeup for two weeks because I was sick and, and then your a skin bunch looks of water. Amazing. My skin looks great. I know, water really, every I just time I feel bad about my water. skin, I'm just like, I need a couple of liters of water and I'll yeah. be fine. So they begin shooting Kate Winslet, Leonardo DiCaprio, gorgeous Billy Zane, gowns. Victor Garber, gorgeous, 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 amazing cast. Kate Winslet, um, trying to think who else was in the, like Kate Winslet really wanted the role. Apparently she sent James Cameron a rose mm -hmm. as a gift to be like, I'm, I have I am to be rose. a rose. Okay, I am your rose. Um, who else? I'm, I'm bumping the mic a lot, but who else auditioned? Oh, I'm pretty sure it was like Claire Danes auditioned. Um, Matthew McConaughey auditioned for Jack. That would be insane. Yeah, Brad Pitt. Oh, Reese Witherspoon. Yes, Reese Witherspoon. Witherspoons is what with I her said. Spoons. Um, with her spoons. Winona Ryder, who Winona I Ryder. love. But I, 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 I do think it's just hard because Kate Winslet no. is iconic in this role and she's a phenomenal actress as well. Like, no, she was She's a, not she was only perfect. a movie star, but like a, an amazing yeah. actress. And There's she also people. looks like it. Yes, I agree. You know? Like and Winona I say, Ryder is very 90s to me. Yeah. Like I look at Winona Ryder and I'm like, she's not from the past. Like she's from the 90s. And the thing is like, I will say, I know everyone was calling Kate Winslet fat, but I do think that there was something to be said about like choosing someone who had like a period accurate body type. No, I think that's very you true. You know what I mean? Like she, she was looks, thin, but she was like- She looks good in a corset she because looks amazing it looks in correct. A corset. It yeah. looks correct. Yeah. Like she has the type of face and body that would have been in style in 1912 while also being one of the most gorgeous women working in Hollywood still to today. Yeah, because this article says Beautiful. that uh, Gwyneth Paltrow was almost. Which and is just that like, she's too thin. And like, everyone she in the is. 90s, it was the heroin chic, it was the waif, it was the very and, like. And Gwyneth Paltrow is like, is waif. You know what I mean? And we were oh, talking she's about waif. this of like, She's waif periods, in a way that like, she's forced it to. Yes, yeah, she's, she's. Where she eats her vagina balls or whatever. Yeah, she just has a know, single. Whatever. What sip of bone broth in the morning yeah. and that's how like, mm, I'm stuffed. Mm, I, oh my God. Oh, I feel a bit sick. You're stuffed because you've I got hate. jade balls up well, your no, coochie. Yeah, you will have blood poisoning from stuffed. your jade balls in your <laughs> vagina. Take it's the poisoning balls your blood. out of your vagina. That's the only balls I'm, that should be in your vagina this. are penis balls. I I'll hate, say you should not put balls in your vagina. Let's just say that. What? You, that is not healthy. Well, then I'm not, I'm not. Then you're not, you don't I've want never, to be, want to be well. I've never done that. No, I don't know it's why not I'm saying really that. I don't want to say it's not possible, but I feel like it's not really possible. I don't think it's really, I think you could. You could, but I just feel like it would squish the balls. It Does that squish, make sense? It would squish the balls. It would also, you'd have to sit in a strange position. Yeah. Which I'm never doing. No. In, 
Sex or real life. No, I know. I'm like, not, to, I love sex. But what you're I love the best that. thing, what I love the most about sex is, is just putting be, balls in your When vagina. you're a girl, sorry, that's very gender normative to sorry. say. When you have a vagina and yes. you're having sex, you don't have to do that much. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like you really don't. Like it's a choose just, your own adventure. It for is. Sure. Like yeah. you can you get to choose your amount of participation in yeah. it, really. And yeah, it yeah. happens anyway. Um I think what if Paltrow could do a period piece that's like the twenties, but I think beyond that, because the twenties well, she did Shakespeare the, in love. The, yes, the twenties is very heroin chic as well. Like, Cause it's very that, yes. it's like that long torso. That the long torso, the boorish, boor, but boyish, oh my God, boyish. The boorish, figure. yeah, the boorish, boyish figure. The yeah. boorish trend of the 20s. I would absolutely slay in the 20s. Yeah. I, would, I think that would really be a good time for me. I mean, I would be, any time period besides now, I would be absolutely committed to an asylum <laughs> within <laughs> yeah, but the 20s, I feel like was weirdly forward thinking compared to like at least the 30s and Definitely, 40s. I think, definitely. Yeah. Uh, uh, but mm -hmm. still, like I mean- Especially Zelda Berlin. Fi Zelda Fitzgerald still got sent, you know what I oh, mean? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I, and she was unwell. No, it wasn't good, it Let's wasn't say, good. Let's say she was unwell. She was like, unwell, she but scream. she did write The Great Gatsby. Yeah, she did. So. She That's a wrote talent. The I would Great love, Gatsby. I was saying this the other day, I was like, I if it wasn't for The Legend of Zelda, I think I would name my child Zelda. I actually think the same thing. Yeah, but I used to love like, the name oh, Zelda. Oh, like Zelda, like, like the Legend of Zelda. It's like, no, first of all, I'm not a virgin. <laughs> that was like um, when my, uh, when I when I was a kid and I think like, what am I going to name my daughters? Mm -hmm. One was Zelda and one was Sina for some reason. That's beautiful. I was like Sina and Zelda. And then my mom was like, you can't name a kid Sina because they'd be like Sina movie lately. No, I think it's fine. I think Sina is a good name. It's also like, is that even a real name? I feel like I made it. It was my no, imaginary Cena's friend. A, I think, I honestly, I'm not going to say this for sure, but I think it's Turkish or something. Really? Yeah. Like I think That's it's- That's validating. It's not an Anglo name, but it is a real name. She was my imaginary friend. That is Sina. That is a wild choice to make, <laughs> to name your child after imaginary friend. I And then I had always ha, said, I also had Ha Ha and Dicky. I wanted to name my kids for a long time um, Jude and Eleanor. Oh yeah, uh, so they have, the Beatles. They have a Beatles the song. Beatles names. But then the, a little life kind of ruined the name G uh, Jude oh, for me because okay. it's just the most traumatized, I to name raped my, individual. <laughs> I wanted to name my kid Honky and Tonk for the Rolling Stones. Yeah, Ruby and Tuesday. <laughs> Ruby and Tuesday. Tuesday's actually a good name. kind of a good name. I like that. Tuesday's name, a Tuesday. good name. One name Paint, the other name Black. <laughs> <laughs> mandolin. It's <laughs> my roommate's name, a mandolin. Well, a mandolin is not mandolin. Oh, mandolin. Yeah. yeah okay, fair enough. Yeah. Whatever. So well. the Titanic, they start filming Dartmouth, Nova Scotia on the boat, on the wow, research boat. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, because they're on the research boat. And it's on an actual boat. They're I on the they're that. on the boat. They're filming it. They're, it's on the Academic Mstislav Kaldish. Great. That's the boat's name. I accept that as Which true. is a, for sure how you say it correctly. That's actually, that's actually the correct pronunciation. Yeah. So, and- You kind and of then, have to stumble through yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, September 1996, they moved the production to Baja Studios in Rosarito, Mexico, okay. where a full-scale Titanic has been constructed. That's awesome. And similar to Titanic the Musical, they have a poop deck that can hinge uh, on, uh, to 90 degrees in the just a few seconds. The hydraulics. The hydraulics. Yeah. I should have checked whether or not they use um Well, who knows, but hydraulics. still. I mean, it's at, at this time, because I don't really understand science, like when I say hydraulics, I don't mean whatever hydraulics actually are. I mean, mm. like it lifts the deck and the deck is yeah. sideways. Yeah. It's so cool that they built a full scale Titanic. That is awesome. Yeah, they like, um, it, I, I think they built like one side of it. But still. They built the starboard side. They would so they, never they do that like now. Half it would all be green screen. It would, all be, it would green be like, screen. like the guy who plays Schmeagle in Lord of the Rings, yeah. like a green screen suit yeah. and balls and that's how they'd film it and it wouldn't look as good. So some of the scenes w took place on the other side of the ships because they turned the ship around at one point. Oh. And so they filmed things in reverse and all the writing was backwards and then they flipped it in post. That is insane. It's not crazy. Literally nuts. And it was because People of like who are the wind. Directors are fucking crazy. It was because of like the way the wind was flowing. That's, like when I hear that, I'm like, that is so cool. Like people who are, I don't know, I'm sure you've had this experience yeah. too. Like even when you're on set, yeah, <laughs> set, but you can tell when somebody is really, ca really cares yes. about when what it, it is. Like you can it tell this passion it, project. It, it is. makes it so much easier when they are good at their job. Oh my God. It's yes. a gift. Yeah. And yeah. like, so when I hear stuff like that, like it's filmed in reverse and whatever, I'm like, that is so cool. Yeah. They also, um, 
Uh, a lot of the props were made of foam rubber for the stuntmen, so they wouldn't They wouldn't die. get hurt. Yeah, that makes sense. And then there were also, like, a bunch of, like, CGI. There were, like, little models, too. There was, like, the model. The So there was a lot going That's on. That's really cool. Which is very cool. James Cameron drew the nude. People know this if you're a real Titanic fan. Yeah, he I drew don't. the nude photo Looking of pervert. Rose. So it's his hands in the movie oh. that are drawing Rose, not there, it'd be Leo's. Funny. I know it's not, but it'd be funny if they were like so old. Like it's yeah. like the most wrinkled <laughs> hands. There's that yeah. in them. I don't know which movie it is, I've, but it's like some Demi Lovato movie where it's like playing the piano. I think it might be Camp Rock, but if you look in the opening like credit of Camp Rock, it's like fingers playing the keyboard oh, and yeah. she's like literally 14. And you're like, <laughs> that is a grown adult hand. <laughs> grown adult Like hand. it's like, they're not like old, but it's like my yeah. hands. Like if you look at my hands, yeah. like, those aren't the hands of a 14 year old. No, 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 no. That's where the age shows up in the beginning. I learned that from Sutton Foster's yeah. show Younger where she pretends to be 26. <laughs> One of the characters goes, you're not fooling anybody. You can always tell in the hands. You really can. So you have to moisturize. You really but can. But I think I'm going to have really old hands because of all the gel nail polish I get. So I just absolutely <laughs> cook my hands under a UV light oh, every yeah. two weeks. I know I need and my nails. eczema. My nails are- and my eczema now is aging my hands like crazy. Your you can't eczema. really even see on the video, but I had a massive eczema outbreak on my hands. And Ooh. they are textured. My hands are bumpy in a big way. And it's. I always thought that I had kind of like really pretty hands. And now I'm you still have nice hands. But they're textured. No, right you do. It'll go you away. Nice it's going to go away eventually. But they say it's going to go in like a month. And I'm Oof, like, what? That's rough. Yeah. That sucks. So I've been sleeping with socks on. <laughs> Your my hands? hands? Yeah. I took them Vaseline. off last night. And, yeah, Vaseline? but that's what, because I scratched in the middle of the night. So oh. I put like cortisone cream and I had this special oh, no. from the eczema shop.com. It's like Manuka honey. Like it's like a Manuka honey kind of like Ooh, spread. It's okay. Great. I'll do a little um, bit of Vaseline sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I have just like a coconut kind of like a really calming oh, v- that's rough. cream as well. I'm sorry. But I just put it on in the night because I scratched. Like last night I took the socks off in my sleep and woke up to me like scratching no. my hand hard in my sleep. Isn't that crazy? That's rough. But it feels good. Like, you know, like it's yeah. bad. But you know when it's itchy. Oh, and you just and you scroll, you, go, you go to town and it yeah. feels so good yeah. in the moment. And then it's like, oops. And then it that. hurts so bad. But I love itching. I love itching. No, Finch stay. Finch stay. Finch so stay. the first thing that Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet film together is the scene where he's drawing her naked. Which I honestly think is Jump smart. Jump right in. Jump right in. I think it's smart. You know, like do what is going to be the most awkward thing. And then all those scenes where you're like hugging and telling each other you love each other. Like, you can do that. You're easy sleep, sauce Leo. because you've. Been like, here's my whole naked he's, ass body. It's so wild to see him so young. Yeah, it really is. He's a great actor. I mean, he's yeah. obviously has a problem of like dating women who are Have like- Have I told you my Leonardo DiCaprio theory? What's your, th- in your Leonardo DiCaprio okay. theory? My Leonardo DiCaprio theory, again- I don't think it's fully original. Allegedly. I for sure have heard bits and bobs of this around. But I think that Leonardo DiCaprio is gay. Okay, love. And I think, or at least bisexual. And I think he gives me bisexual. He's in some sort of long term partnership with a man. Okay. And so his representation finds him women who could benefit from the publicity of being with Leonardo DiCaprio. They book Daisy Jones and the Six. They book Daisy Jones and the Six. They do other things, whatever. And then. The reason why they all leave around 25 is when that's like the time that, you know, it's kind of like, I don't need this anymore. And probably like the length of contract. Yeah. Because if you look at it, he's always with these women for like two, three years and then it's done. Wow. Or it's like shorter ones, whatever. But, and again, this, I realize this comes off as me defending Leonardo DiCaprio, which I am not. It's I don't think more... it comes off that way. Okay. I think it's fine. <laughs> Because I've said this to some people and they were like, well, I just think he's a bad guy. I was like, I also don't think, I don't, I I don't think it's a bad guy. No, I agree. Like, I don't think it's awesome energy. Like, I think it's it's loser energy, but it's like, it's not a crime to date 25. It just means you have Peter Pan syndrome and you don't want to be challenged. But it's not like, he's not, Dating a high schooler. Exactly. Like, it's it's so not the same it's thing. It's obviously like, about power, weird, for but sure. it's about, is it about power, power in the sense sure. of, like, he doesn't want to be challenged. Like, he wants to yeah. be the alpha in every way. For sure. Also, he's done a lot for the environment. He's done a lot for the environment. And also, like, it's he's not like women are, with- it's not like women are coming out and being like, this no, guy, that's like, true. assaulted and manipulated me. They're just like, oh, whatever, hung out with Leonardo DiCaprio for two years. He's a kind of a weird It could also be man. like he's like stunted emotionally from for when sure. he became the most famous. Oh, for sure. It also would make sense um, if he's gay in the sense that like, this is a joke. This is a, I think I'm a, this is somebody, another person's joke. It's not my stand up joke, but they're like a gay couple 
one of them could be in their early hundreds and the other one could be freshly 18 and I'd be like, they make it work. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, for sure. That's just how it is. So yeah. he might just be like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. He's a movie star. It was the point of what I was saying of like, he's he is such a, a good star. actor. And when you watch him, it's like when I was watching that, um, the there's like a Lakers dynasty show where it's all about Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. It's on mm. HBO and it's by Adam McKay and it's fucking fabulous. You should watch it. It's okay. got great acting. Um, but they talk about Magic Johnson playing and they're like, he play ba- when he's playing basketball, they're like, you just watch him and you feel good. Like it's fun <laughs> to watch him play. And I feel like that's like what a movie star actor kind yeah. of is. Like you watch Will Smith in Men in Black yeah. or Leonardo DiCaprio when he's on his movie star shit, when he's yeah. playing like Gatsby or whatever. And yes. you're like, I watch him and I have fun. Like I'm having mm-hmm. fun watching him as opposed to like King James. Yeah. Like, Will Smith, which is like not, that's like acting, no, acting. It's which, actually acting. Which you don't have fun necessarily watching. Well, watching like, Leonardo DiCaprio play Jordan Belfort and Wolf you're like, of Wall I'm Street. having fun. What a blast of a movie. What a blast. What a truly. blast. Like truly yeah. start to finish that movie. And you can say what you want about it, blah, blah, blah. The movie's amazing. The movie is amazing. The movie's fabulous. So uh, there were 800 crew members on the film, which is crazy. That's hard because you don't Cameron, know anyone's names. James Cameron was mean. Oh no. He was a little bit evil. And Kate Winslet, very afraid of drowning and was like, I'm not going to work with him again unless he offers me a lot of money, which is crazy, Kate, because you are an avatar two way of the water. So what's the truth? Yeah. What's the truth here, Kate? The famous line, how is your child? How is your child? How is your baby? My baby baby? is strong. baby is strong. So must have gotten that a pretty penny in that. And she's talking to a whale in that. So she's literally underwater again. Yeah. My baby is strong. Also, I'm sorry. You have 800 crew members on like a fake ship. And or in the ocean. Yeah, for sure you'd be a bit stressed out. I'm not- Oh, I, I would be afraid of drowning. Also wasn't, I, I remember hearing this. I don't know if this is true, but like they, the water was freezing cold and they made it cold so her nipples would stand on it. What? That's what I heard. That can't be true. I heard that. Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe. I don't really want to look up Kate in, Winslet nipples. But in my, in my research, it was more that they're just like, there was so much water that they just couldn't really heat it. But maybe it was because of the nipples. Nipplegate. Nipplegate. August 9th, 1996, they're filming on the the famous academic Mstislav Keldish. Oh, yes. The, the ship. And someone, an unknown, probably a crew member, puts PCP in the clam chowder. Okay? PCP, uh, the drug. It sent over 50 people to the hospital because they were tripping on the clam chowder. How do you put that? Here's the thing that's so crazy about that. There's a, obviously there's a lot going on. First of all, how the fuck do you get PCP period? Like what an insane- In, in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. That's what I'm saying. Like what an insane drug to buy. Yeah. Also, you know that thing where you learn so often, like when you were, I remember growing up and they were saying a lot with, with um, trick or treating, like don't ever eat anything that's yeah. open yeah. because it could, it could be drugged. Mm-hmm. Could, there could be weed in it and people think it's funny to get kids high. Yeah. And I remember growing up and being like, people aren't gonna fucking share their weed. Like, why would they do that? It's not funny. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And never mind because somebody put PCP in the food. <laughs> in the clam chowder. Yeah. How I, do you find out everyone's on PCP? You know what I well, mean? Well, cause I think people were like vomiting and like rolling I mean, around like, and then they got where, it How like, does tested. your brain, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Cause like, because they must have all just been like, everyone's freaking out. We yeah, got to get these people to the hospital. Ill, yeah. Have you ever had that happen where you've like inadvertently taken drugs that you didn't know were drugs? Because I've never had that happen. I think it would be awful. I've taken like a drug that I thought was one drug and then it was a different drug. Okay. But I've never- but I've never, even like the classic thing of like, these brownies are weed brownies. Like I've never a, oh, had that happen. I've had it. So there've been a couple of times where like, I think I've gotten roofed, roofied. Oh my God. But like, didn't realize it. Because yeah, you it just would just thought be you were having a good like, time. Well, because it was yeah. sort of like, oh, it was crazy how much I like blacked out and wasn't in control of my body last night, even though I only had like five beers. Yeah, now that you're saying it, I'm thinking that maybe <laughs> I. <I've been> <laughs> <laughs> I think the roofing happens like a lot more often. Because I remember when I was like 19 and very high femme and very hot, I would black out all the time, not mm-hmm. all the time, but like five times. Yeah. And, I never blacked out again, yeah. even though I drink a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not now, but like if I have drank a lot and not blacked out. Well, because I used to go to this club in Kingston and I'd be like, oh yeah, like I always get blackout at this club. And, and you're like, like, I always get like, roofied at this yeah, club. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I think I might've been getting roofied. <laughs> That's, being a woman is Because the thing horrible. is like, losing control of your body is like blacking out is one thing, but losing control of your body is a thing that has only happened to me a few times and it's always yeah. been kind of like, uh oh. Yeah, that's bad. But no, I, yeah, that's- um, we can censor it. What club? 
gigs. Oh, obviously the spot. Yes. <laughs> but also stages. But the yeah. spot more more thing. Yeah. But the spot. We told you about the spot. You can tell. You can put the spot on blast on the podcast. <laughs> I don't fucking care. What are they gonna do? They're in a strip mall. Love. One time a car crashed through the window. <sighs> That's great. Like into the club. No, that place is terrifying. It, it doesn't have any kind of like decor or anything except it's just like black curtains everywhere. <laughs> yeah. it, it looks like a black box theater that they've turned into. Yes. A That's it's a, crazy. It's a, it's a den and it is in a strip mall. That's wild. Yeah, it's nuts. Sponsor us. So, Do you want to get roofied? <laughs> <laughs> so they never caught the person behind the poisoning. They, That's they wild. They looked into it for years, for like two it years. It must feel two or really three years. good to get away with that. I know. Well, because like, also how would you track that? that? Is, the rush of that is crazy. Oh, no. And you know that there's people alive who know who, who put knows? the PCP the, and, in the clam shatter. And the person shatter. who knows knows that they did it. But oh, for sure. That's like in and they'll never high tell. school. I if had you're a, the person who knows. <laughs> my teacher was battling alcoholism. Uh, and I want, that's like a oh, kind no. way of saying he was drunk in class constantly. Mm -hmm. And we had to write uh, like a 25 page paper and that was our final thing. And I didn't want to do it. And I was on one at the end of high school. Like yeah. I was very, oh, I was on my, like way. I was like God complex. Like I am so smart. Everybody, like I am just so much smarter than everyone. And <laughs> obviously don't worry everyone. I got immediately leveled by life in university. <laughs> like it got bad. I got so humbled. It's crazy. Awesome. But I lied to my teacher. He was like, hey, you're supposed to hand in your paper. And I was like, you didn't get it. I handed it into you yesterday. <laughs> and I didn't write it. And he was like, oh yeah, I must have forgot. And then he gave me a 95 on it. <gasps> and I didn't hand it. I never wrote it. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy you got away with that. I know. That's actually insane. It's good for I, her. I got called in my adult life at one of my jobs and fucking it's fine. Who cares? Like it's not true, but I got called a liar once <gasps> because people said that I lied about getting death threats at my job at the CBC. I'll say it. And I didn't. If the concept of a woman getting a death threat online is weird to you. Yeah. Like it's just, Wake I wouldn't up. lie about that. I'd Wake lie about up, something sheeple. better. And I was so offended because I'm like, no, I used to be a liar. <laughs> yeah, I used to lie all the time. I'm, and if I'm no, gonna, so and honest. if I'm gonna lie, I'm gonna lie about something insane. Yeah, I'm not yeah, gonna yeah. like lie about this. Yeah, this like I'm gonna take thing. a massive swing and benefit from it. Like that's what I'm saying. Like I must feel really good to get away with drugging everyone with PCP just because the rush when you know. Yeah. That you're you've gotten, you've away, gotten away with, with it. something. Like, yeah. Like when I finally graduated, I was like, they can't take this away, and it's fine because I didn't graduate university. So like, even if they revoke my high school diploma, like yeah. what are you gonna do? Yeah, seriously. It's not like it's gonna undo my university degree, which I also yeah. didn't finish. Literally, if you put the PCP in the claim chowder, please email us at truth. It's fucking, it's Rachel Zegler. Uh, Rachel Zegler. I know it. that she wasn't alive. Yeah. Oh my God, I wore my Rachel Zegler shirt. I wore my Rachel Zegler and shirt. And I forgot to take off my outer layer. <laughs> yes, Rachel Zegler, if you put the PCP in the claim chowder, please come on Truth Tannic. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Zegler, if you put the PCP in the, in the clam, clam chowder, chowder, please email us at Rachel. truthtanic at gmail.com. Email us at truthtanic.com. We're wearing our shirts. Come on the podcast. Rachel Zegler, season two of Truth Tanic. Please come on. 2024. 2024. It's going to be next year. We're seeing, the whole team is seeing the ballad of Songbirds and Snakes We're you, going, girl. we're going. We're going on Thursday. We're having, a, we're having a fun time. So is that how you just announced there's going to be a season two? I feel like we've announced it a million times. I feel like we've alluded to it. But let's say it now as an announcement. We're doing a season two. We're, we've, we've convinced our producer to not move to LA. <laughs> <laughs> and pursue other pursuits and instead and, and, and stay with here. his partner. And we said, what if we, we said, did? what if instead of a marriage, you had two adult daughters <laughs> who run a podcast? <laughs> and we, yes, what that if? That you do all the work for. But we are here for the vibes. Yes. And if you want to e transfer us some money to pay for So Rob. I think, and do we feel okay to like announce? Yeah. We're oh. going to do the Salem Witch Trials. Yeah, we're going to do the Salem Witch Trials season two. Salem Bitch Trials, baby. Sa Salem that Witch Trials. That was Blair's. You know joke. what? Let me take my shirt off. Not it, my it, actual it. shirt off, obviously, but let me take my Rachel Zegler <laughs> let shirt. Let me get off. naked. Let me get naked. <laughs> Rachel Zegler, if you put the Rachel if you Zegler. put the PCP in the clam chatter on the set of Titanic. 1997. Email us at truthtanic.com. As a baby, as a truly negative three years old. As you, email as a, us. If you or your parents put the PCP in the clam chowder. Because we know you did. Rachel Zegler put the PCP and in the clam chowder on the And if you don't come on this on podcast, the then you are inadvertently stating that you put the PCP in the clam chowder. Yes. Because your silence is violence. And if in times of oppression, you, you, you're silent, you side with the oppressor. And in this case, the oppressor is the person who put the PCP in the clam chowder on the set of Titanic. Yep. And that's on that. 
And that's on Lynn Chowder. And that's on And that's on Rachel Ziegler. Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Are you a songbird or are you a snake? Are you? Are you a songbird or are you a snake? She, obviously, I know this is not the newest information because she's in West Side Story, the reboot. She has a phenomenal voice. Oh, she really does. If I had that voice, I would not be here. No. I would be doing- You'd be in a ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I would be in the ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Or you'd be a backup dancer I'd be doing a Southern accent. Are you- I love the Covey. I love the Covey. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, okay so Titanic. We're going to go back Titanic. to- Titanic. They were supposed to shoot for 138 days. They shot to 160 days. They officially wrapped on March 23rd, 1997. Spring break, baby. Yeah. Uh, Kate Winslet got hypothermia and a bunch of the that's, cast members. Can I just say, that's so me. That is like, so me. If I, I get hypothermia honest, immediately. No, I just like, if there's an illness, I will get it. I will mm. contract it. And it will somehow ruin my life. Especially if it's like a cold-based illness. I'm like, if I get too cold, I'm sick immediately. No, I know. I have, I'm I've sick t- immediately. Do you know that I, so I fucked up my knee when I was like 12. So <gasps> I now literally my the same knee thing. hurts when it's, when the, when it's rains. Bitch, or when it's literally cold. me too. Oh my I, God, we're I, witches. I, I actually, like, sometimes you say something that is too close to my real life know, in a way like, that wears me out. We've found each other no, I literally, in, in all of time and all of space. We have found each other. I slammed my knee into the Ottawa Canal and now my oh, knee hurts no. when it rains. <laughs> And I would have been around, I would have been like 12. Yeah, I was, when I was 12, I hurt my knee while playing soccer. Rough. And I, I, I like tore I was my skating. meniscus. I tore my meniscus. And meniscus. now it's the same thing. It's like when it rains, it I hurts. T- yeah, and if I can it, tell when it's going to rain. I'm also really affected by air pressure, <gasps> yes. which a lot of women in my family have been yeah. for generations. And they thought it was like headache spells. And I'm like, girl, just take an Advil cold and sinus. I know it's <laughs> from the 1800s, so you don't know. I always thought that like air pressure things were like really common. And then when I realized that, like, not everyone, I'm like, what do you mean you don't know what the air it's pressure like is? It's like when you I'm realize that you're mentally ill. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God. Like, well, you guys not, don't want to kill yourself? Yeah, I'm like, you guys just walk into a situation and you think everybody here has no reason to hate me. Yeah. So I'm safe. Yeah. Because I walk into every situation being like, everyone here is so yeah. mad. Every, Last night here... I went to that opening and, and my agent was there and I was like, she hates me. Yeah. And that's not true. To be fair, I just met your agent. She was pretty intimidating. She is. I love her because she will fight for you. <laughs> but she's hard to read. Like there'll be times where I'll be like, I'm good. I'm like, she's had like a last minute. She's like, when can you send this today? Like this thing. And I was like, maybe around like four or five. Yeah. And she was like, okay, just send it ASAP. Like she does. <laughs> she overuses periods. Yes. No, that's like agent behavior. That's though. agent. That's agents agent. love to because they have things period. to do. No, they're busy. They have things. They're, bu- they're, they're busy. busy. They're busy. They are more booked and blessed than any other clients are. Oh, for sure. You know. I'm just also terrified in the same way when I was ever in any job, I was terrified of getting fired. I'm terrified of getting dropped in a way that it's like, okay, it's fine. (laughs) Like you'll be okay. Like it's fine. Like what's really gonna happen? But that's not that bad. Like people are dying, Carly. Like people are dying. There's a war. So the uh, speaking of war, the Titanic set was a real war. Lots of people Kate got colds. Got people cold. got kidney infections. Kidney infections from holding their pee from spending hours in cold water. They got the flu. Um, they went to, the, they left the, se- several people left the productions, three stuntmen broke their bones and SAG decided that the set was never any real danger. So no one got in trouble. So yeah. It's fun. not real danger if everybody does PCP unconsensually. Yes. SAG, get your act together. And then DiCaprio said that he didn't feel threatened on the set. Oh, well, so that, no one else yeah, should've. that's good. He didn't feel like he was unsafe. What so no a one horrible, what, I know he's like young, whatever, like it's fine. But like, if you're weighing in in that way, being like, actually, I felt fine. Yeah. It's like, too bad you broke your bones. But I actually felt I really safe because I was the, the star and also I'm a man, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's actually fine. Yeah. So blah, 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 blah. Um, they spent $200 million on the movie. Two hundred um, million. So they sent dollars. in. Wait, they, wait. Two hundred million, million dollars. dollars. It was worth it. So they sent the three-hour cut of Titanic to Fox. Fox is like, well, no, we should cut. It's all a three-hour. This. this is before movies were three hours. Uh, yeah, like no one's gonna like. They're gonna. We should cut all this. Like this is too long. There, people are gonna see. Like it's gonna be too long. There are gonna be less showings. Less people are gonna see it. They're not gonna like it. And Cameron was like, "You want to cut my money? You're gonna have to fire me. You want to fire me? You're gonna have to kill me." Oh my God. He's kind of an icon in the way that for sure he's problematic, but some of these quotes, man, he's awesome. But if you're going to be kind of problematic, you have to at least have the common decency to be a maniac. Too many people who are absolutely dangerous to society are just like normal or like sniveling losers. Yeah. Be unhinged. Yeah. Say you can't fire me unless you kill me. That's funny. No, that is funny. That's funny. funny. No, that's what I like about James Cameron is for sure he has lots of problematic traits, but he's also serving. 
Yeah. He's giving us content within yes. the content. Yeah. It was like how everyone felt about Trump before he destroyed the free Yeah, world. exactly. Fox goes to Paramount and they're like, can you put some money in the pot? Because we don't want to end up losing all this money and blah, 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 blah. And then Cameron offered to forfeit his share of the money in the, in the movie. Okay. Um, because the Titanic in the kind of like last stretch of filming – they were just like, this is, they're, we're losing like at least $100 uh, yeah, million. I, remember, dollars. I think um, when I was researching the Titanic musical, they were talking about how the like set of the Titanic and like the stories from the filming of the Titanic kind of mm -hmm. become like a national joke. Like, oh yeah. It was known as, it was like, this movie's going to flop. Every It's funny how oh, bad sure. everything is going on this. Well, set. and this is it crazy. It was the don't worry darling of its time. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's crazy too, because they were like, he was getting a lot of like venom from like the, the crew and from the production companies being like, we are like easily going to lose at least a hundred million dollars. Like there's no way that we're going to lose like less than a hundred million dollars. That's crazy. And it was seen as kind of like James Cameron's hubris. Wow. Again, the hubris of James Cameron's the hubris and like of man. his desire for extravagance and like wanting to do this massive projects. Like people were like pissed. Um, but then the crazy thing was that it kind of, when they, they didn't want to premiere the film in LA. So they premiered it in Tokyo. Okay. And so the audience was, were sort of like, okay. Well, they're like, we don't, it's not a movie that has a strong tie to Japan. No, there's no ties to Japan. It's also like truly Japan is in the other ocean. Yeah, they're like, cool, <laughs> man. We kind of have our own So they're just sort disasters. of like, okay, that was nice. You know, cool. we had two nuclear bombs dropped on us, but sure. Yeah, I guess the Titanic cry about was your sad. Shit. Yeah, I guess that you was know, sad. Whatever. Remember when you guys did Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Yeah, for no, that just, also sucked. You just did it for shits and giggles? You just did it because you could. And, and so, sometimes as an American, when people threaten your freedom, you should- Bomb civilians. For sure. It's just your right for yeah. freedom. It's for freedom. It's, it's for, for freedom. freedom. It's because you're free. But the thing is, you're so free and people are jealous of how free you are. Yeah. So then they eventually premiere it in Hollywood, December 14th, 1997. And it On becomes- On the 14th day of Christmas, my, my true, true love gave to me a Titanic Wait, movie. Oh, Titanic. I was going to say, there's only 12 days of Christmas. But it's December 14th, baby. And it becomes the highest grossing film of all time. That's and iconic. Today, I'm so happy for it that. It has um, uh, earned $2.257 billion at the box office. That's why you I'm pretty sure that that sum contains uh, like all the other re-releases and stuff like that. Yeah. So when they did in 3D, when they did the 25th anniversary. And like maybe like residuals and stuff like that. Yeah, but like- but it's recruited. Tons of money. Obviously, it's recruited. It is the highest grossing film of all time until it was beaten by Avatar. <laughs> also so by James, James Cameron, Cameron is clocked in. And it was some, this is an estimation I found on the internet, but I thought it was funny and relatable, which is that it was estimated that 7% of teen girls has seen Titanic by its fifth week in theaters. Absolutely. And that's so how relatable. you know you've made that's how you know you've, a if, good thing. If the teen girls are on board, then you know you're, you, you're good. You're, you're safe. good. You're safe. You're good. You're safe. Teen girls. Define culture. No, for that's real. That's a fact. Like, I feel like if I was a director, I'd yeah. be like, we're showing the cut of this movie. We'll do like a regular test audience and then we're doing teen girl test oh, audience. Oh, for sure. And because get I their want opinions. this to be, like also it's a cultural mainstay, yeah. surely because the teen girls turn into women who yeah. then love it. Like, yeah, teen girls love things so hard, you know? They really do. And it kind of tells you like what to focus on. Like teen girls made the Beatles famous. Yeah. You know? They made the Rolling Stones famous. They made everyone famous. Yeah. Anyone who's ever been famous, it's a teen girl audience. Benjamin Franklin did the thing. Viola Jackson, my woman king. That's There's not right, so is it? There's so much there. <laughs> Benjamin yeah. Franklin did the Something. thing. Viola Jackson. Don't know who that is. Who the Viola hell is that? Davis. <laughs> my woman king. I combined some things there going on in my brain. Yeah. Whatever. Who cares? So you're dying. <laughs> Your eyes are so red. Well. <laughs> that just well. reminded me, the way that you said that reminded me of that. You've seen the video it was of Laura Dern talking about Baby Yoda. <laughs> when they're talking to her and they're like, Baby Yoda's here. Like, what do you want to say about Baby Yoda? And she goes, I heard that he was spotted at a basketball game. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. And you're watching, you're like, you're like, what? <laughs> what does that what mean? the fuck is she talking about? And the person who's interviewing her is like, oh, okay. Like, she's insane. Because it was when Baby Yoda was really big. So they're just like, what do you think about Baby Yoda? And she goes, I heard that he was spotted at a basketball, basketball game. game. That's all I'm going to say. That's like, all I'm going to say. What are you talking about? Oh, I just done crack. <laughs> 
Okay, I'll, I'll just rattle off a couple of other, my other favorite facts. Okay, great. So while James Cameron was writing the Titanic, he listened to almost exclusively, guess what? Enya. Enya of only time. That's who awesome. Who can say where the And Orin Nicoflo. In the day, I'm the same. And She's great. Orin Nicoflo. So he's listening to only Enya. He wants Enya to compose the score for Titanic. And she says no. Enya. Which is just like, can you imagine you, an Enya scored Titanic? I know. Honestly, the fact that we have been deprived of that is it's, it's hateful. It's mind boggling. So he goes back and gets James Horner, who they worked on another movie. They had a falling out. And he was like, please, please, please come compose the movie. Yeah. So James Horner comes in and he gets a singer named Celine. Sissel. Oh. Sissel to do all the... That stuff that you hear in the movie. And he composes the movie. And then James Cameron is very much like, I only want instrumental music. I only want instrumental music. And James Horner is like, might be fun to have a song. And he's like, no, I will not have a song in this. I might be fun to have a song in this. And so James Horner says, no problem, no song. We'll just have instrumental music. He writes, my heart will go on. He goes, let me cook for a bit. Yeah, he says, let me cook, let me cook. He writes, my heart will go on. He calls up Celine Dion's husband manager. And it's like- Adult husband manager. Adult who husband dated manager. Her, who married, married her when she yeah, was 16. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Who pulled her out of Quebec. Yeah. Uh, he, I think he was also Quebecois, wasn't he? Whatever. Who cares? He's got fucking, there's nothing that has Quebecois more written over it than being an adult man dating a 16 year old. And I'm sorry. But also being her manager. Also being her and manager. And she's the best singer in the world. Yes. So he, call, he calls up Celine Dion and he's like, hey, I wrote the song for this awesome movie and it's like, you know, it's, it's good. I want you to secretly record a demo and then I'm going to wait for the right moment and play it for James Cameron. Love. Um, and so apparently Celine Dion is like singing the song. She's like in tears. She gets talked into it. She's like, this is the most beautiful song like ever written. She goes in, she puts her full yeah, she, she riffs. pussy yeah. into that song. She says, I'm about to clock in. She's, she's like, I'm about to do the, the possibly the greatest single the greatest vocal Thing performance ever done. of the last and a what, lot of people clown on my heart years? will go on. The great a lot of people clown on it. Go back right now and listen to my heart will go on. It's a great fucking. Song. It is incredible. Just the, the fact that she and because I went back and listened to it because I a, a huge Celine Dion fan, but I don't will often not listen to my heart will go on just because like it's pretty you know cheesy. It's part mm -hmm. of the movie, whatever. She does this thing where like the first half of the song is like very soft, like every night in my dreams. And then like second half, she just, <gasps> yeah, yeah, like truly incredible. Um, she's so, phenomenal. She's phenomenal. She nails it. Um, James Horner waits until James Cameron is in a good mood and then plays him so it's the months, demo. Yeah, he waits months and months and, <laughs> and months. And months and months and months. Plays in the demo. James Cameron is like, rah, 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 rah. but then he eventually talks him into it. And also because Cameron has upset the studios, obviously, so he's like, we'll at this a, point. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, at least they'll have a song that they can so kind of sell as a package deal with this movie. Um, and that'll make them happy, which it did. And then the song was amazing. The song is fucking great. And they won best song at the Oscars. They also won- No, everyone like, does Grammy that. Like or? everybody has yeah. like a song that comes yeah. out so they can win best new song at the Oscars. It's true. That's why every single Disney re-release, you have to sit through some boring ass oh new song. Oh my God, nightmare. I know, because they want best new song. So they got nominated for 14 Academy Awards and won 11. Wow. wow. They won 11. That is crazy. They didn't win uh, either of the acting. Um, Kate Winslet and Gloria Stewart, uh, both of the Roses, were nominated for uh, supporting and lead actress, and they both lost. Obviously, Leo did not win. Did not. He didn't get nominated. Wow. No, he did not get nominated. The other one they lost was, I believe, for some art direction. Oh, makeup. It okay. got nominated for makeup and lost for makeup. And um, apparently another thing is that Titanic weirdly has this like, it, this notoriety for one of the only films that will make men cry. Really? Yeah. Which is just kind of fun. That is fun. They're like, yeah, people, men cry at Titanic. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all I've, all I've got on the no, James that's great. Cameron movie. But um, it really just is such a... Such a moment. And um, I wish, I, I feel like I wanted to go more into like how they kind of replicated the sinking. Mm -hmm. But I really think it's better. Just watch like a documentary on it because like talking about it doesn't do it justice. You want to see it. You want to see it. Like they were in this giant tank. They were ripping models in half. Like it was truly like. That's cool. Not so fat so. 
Um, they also did a bunch of things where like they made sure that the water was running like at normal speed because like previous movies had done the water in slow motion. So you couldn't tell that it looked kind of weird. Mm. But they were like, we're going to make the water look normal. Well, it's really scary. Like yeah, they, it, it's because horrifying. it looks so real. It's horrifying. Yeah. And it really feels like you're in the, like it does an amazing job of making you feel like you're in the movie replica sets where like mm -hmm. they have these plans and blah, blah, blah. Like they got like these etiquette coaches. Like they really, really did a good job of making it historically accurate. And you can like obviously pick and prod and whatever, but it's incredibly well done. Yeah, but it's not like when they it like is. put fucking, and even in Star Wars, when they put like, they use CGI in that, you're like, this is the worst thing ever. Like yeah. Titanic looks good. It does. Also at the end, when Rose is lying on the door and she looks up at the stars, they use the wrong star map. And Neil deGrasse Tyson emailed James Cameron was like, you use the wrong stars. So James he Cameron- trouble for groping? Yeah, for sure. But he was also groping for facts <laughs> of what the night sky looked like. Groping for the truth. I think he got recently accused. Yeah, of for a sure bunch he did. Stuff. Well, well, he fixed the stars in Titanic. Okay, you know what time it is, Blair? I do. Let's, Let's make, make this tragedy about, about us. It's the time of the episode where we take this horrible tragedy that is the Titanic and make it about us. Yes. Because we're the most relevant in the room. And we encourage you to think about how you can make this tragedy about you as well. And in any tragedy, any I think tragedy, you can do really. That. It doesn't have to be the Titanic. But I do feel a little less bad about this one because it's a um, movie. The movie really was them making a, this tragedy about them. Yeah, definitely. My question is similar to one of the questions we've already done. Okay. So why don't you go first? Okay. My question is if we're doing a Titanic 1997 reboot. Uh, my, we have the same question. Okay. Oh, maybe what's we your don't. Cast? Maybe, maybe we don't. Mine was, what's oh, your, your cast? Oh, your cast. Yeah. Okay, that's what's your question? My question was like, what would you change? Okay, so let's just talk about what we change and do our casts for our Titanic reboot. Oh, okay. So are, are we considering that like everything is the exact same? You can change, if you're changing it, you can change it and then cast it differently. Okay, Melissa McCarthy is the insignificant Molly Brown. Love that. That's First one. iconic. Off the back. Off Amazing. the bat. Yes. And she's in like a garb and she, and we're yes. gonna give her like a B plot where she gets to have some fucking fun. Obviously I know just like there's a whole thing about being like, she's like making fun of her own fatness by falling down, but that girl can prat fall like nobody's business. And I think no. we should give her a prat fall. I hate when people say that also, cause like as like a chubby woman, uh, one of the only things I can do is fall down really well. It looks awesome. I know it's funny and it's fun to do. There's a reason so, like, why like, fall. Kevin James does it too. Like, like you have a problem if you see a fat person falling down and you're like, that's humiliating it sounds like because they're fat. No, I think it sounds like they're jealous. It sounds like it sounds like you're jealous, but also it's rude if you just see someone falling down and you're like, that's disgusting because they're fat. Yeah, it's like, no, it's you funny because they're falling down. It's funny because falling down is funny. Falling down is objectively very funny. Yes, exactly. So we give Melissa McCarthy a couple Pratt falls. A couple of Pratt falls. But down she also the gets grand staircase. <laughs> yes. But also I'd love to see her really act. She's, She's, She's a great actor. She's a great actor. So I think actor. we it's it's kind of almost like um contextually like really a confusing performance. Like we give her like some beautiful <laughs> performances. Yeah. And then, and then, and then she, she falls, falls down. down the like grand you never scene. really know scene to scene <laughs> like what's she coming. Does she doesn't make it to dinner because no. she whoa! falls down the grand Like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then she's like, and then yeah. she like does this beautiful monologue about, yes. about her life. Yes. And then it, it's gorgeous. And the mummy's in this iteration. Yes. She, and she has Who, it at who's all the times. Who, we have someone who plays the mummy. Yeah, yeah. Timothy Chalamet. I love that. Timothy Chalamet in like a green screen suit. Yeah. Playing the anthropomorphic mummy. Because I think- And he's giving Wonka. Yes. He's I think doing Wonka. Jack, I think that like Jack, a lot of people would cast Timothy Chalamet's Jack. Yeah, I think, I think it, that's I think true. it's Tom Holland. You're so right, I think Blair. it's Tom Blair, Holland. you're so correct. It's crazy. I think I'm correct. I think no, I'm really right. No, you're so correct. It's Thank crazy you. right Thank now. Thank you so much. Even though he could play, obviously, of course, the the, the radio operator, the radio operator that doesn't really appear, um, and then Rose, I'm kind of stumped on Rose. Yeah. Also, who would you cast as all these things? I've been no, I feel like we're kind of building something together. Okay, okay I really I like this. that. It, it, I feel. I assumed you were gonna say Rachel's. Name. Oh, I was gonna say Rachel Zegler. Rachel Zegler. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'd be worried to cast Zendaya as Rose because no, I, don't I don't think want she them could to do break Rose. up. You know? I also don't think she could do Rose. Yeah, I'm you sorry, need somebody, and I love Zendaya. I love Zendaya as well, but there is a certain performance that is, so to think of who are the young actor girls these days mm -hmm. who can really bring something to the table. I know. I, I mean, Saoirse Ronan as always, oh, but again, Saoirse it Ronan feels, you know. Saoirse Ronan, I feel like is even like a bit too old yeah, for I think Rose you're right. at this point. Like I we could, could do Florence her. Pugh. Florence Pugh. I, She's meant for period pieces, at least. Like, she looks of a time. You know, honestly, I like Rachel Zegler. I like Rachel. But there's also, like, 
I don't know. It's hard. I just feel like Kate Winslet is so perfect. No, it's it's a really hard thing. I feel like we should get an unknown. Because also, like, Rose just has this, like, athleticism to her. Yeah, I Where, agree. like, when she, it's at the end of the movie and the hallways are flooding. And, and she's, she's, like, running. propelling herself on the pipes yeah. holding the axe. I'm like, that is, she's got. She's strong. She's strong. Yeah. She's a strong, strong. This is why I almost want to say Jennifer Lawrence. But again, like, I feel like at this point she's too she's old. She's too old, but I agree. And Tom I, Holland, also a bit too old. I feel like I'd love to see two, like, kind of teen stars. Yeah, I know. Who, it's just like, like, we're so out of touch. We don't know who the teen stars are anymore. I know. It'd be cool if it was like, yeah, like teen stars already Maybe have like a bit of traction. Maybe the twink Heartstopper? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That would be, f- the, or the one who's bi. Yeah, the one who's bi would be a really good Jack. The one who's bi would be a really good Jack. And yeah. then I'm trying to think. Like, I'm like, who are the teens Where are the loving? Teens? You know what I mean? Because like, I don't really yeah. like, I mean, like the teens love Renee Rapp, but like, I no. don't believe Renee Rapp is a straight woman. I don't believe her as a gay. I don't believe her as much. I know. And I like Renee Rapp. I like her too. She's got a great voice, but like I- Every time she plays something, I'm just like, yeah, she's playing that. Yeah, you know? she's 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 Renee Rapp in the flesh. You know, if this movie were made even like in 2001, mm-hmm. Rachel McAdams yeah, would, would have been be a, a fantastic She's rose. phenomenal. She's phenomenal. I rewatched Mean Girls when I was sick. Mm. And what she, a perfect movie. She The choices she makes as Regina George are- Great. She's terrifying. Oh, it's horrifying. But it's not, it's the same like thing as like the Meryl Streep, Miranda Priestley of it all, where she's not yelling. No, it's sickly. But she's angry. Like it's sickly, it's sweet. Yeah. I honestly, I think Rachel Zegler. Yeah, because I can't think of the other team. Rachel Zegler, Tom Holland. Um, I think I would love, I'm trying to think who had won as Victor Garber. Yeah. As Thomas Andrews. I mean, I already brought up Bradley Whitford, but I think he's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be fun to even get a Richard Schiff. Like, let's just get like an old guy. Yeah, in there. get an old dude. There's also like Captain Smith. Okay. Would be a good Captain Smith. Oh, you know who would be a good Captain Smith? That's that guy from like, like, um, oh, 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 Charles Dance from, Who's that? from Game of Thrones. Okay, I believe you. Or anyone from Game of Thrones, really. You yeah. Know? We get Maisie Williams. <gasps> she could be Rose. Yeah. She could be fun too, you know. Like she's got she's got Sophie the Turner too. Yeah, Sophie Turner. I feel like I pick over she's Maisie beautiful. Williams, and she's really funny. She's hilarious, and she's really because that's the other thing. Rose is funny. Yeah, she's funny. I want to get Lily Reinhart in there in <gasps> some capacity. Oh my god! Yeah, as like maybe like as that like we can pregnant. Give, like why don't girlfriend. we give Rose a friend? That's not. Yeah, Rose should, should have, have a friend. friend that's not her, just her mom. Yeah, that's not her mom. Yeah, yeah. I do agree. I think that's good. Uh, I- Fabrizio is Pete Davidson. <laughs> And he gets yes. absolutely fucking he smashed. Gets, Pete Davidson's would get smashed by, by, the, a, by a steam sack. sack. Next to Addison Ray. Next to Addison Ray. Oh, the, the Addison Ray's in the movie too. Addison, oh, she's gotta be in the movie. She's just in the, she's Cora. As, yeah, she's I the best say, Addison Ray is that, is that third class passenger that the first mate shoots with a gun after he locks them behind the, yes. the grave. Yes, yes. Or yes. Addison Ray's the one who falls onto the propeller off the top <laughs> of the boat. <laughs> Addison Ray hits the propeller in yes. the Titanic. Wow, I'm pretty committed to... Sophie Turner now, I think. I like that. I like Sophie Turner and Tom Holland. I'd have to see them together. I'd have to see them together. I want Sutton Foster <gasps> as the, uh, what were you going to say? So, no, say, say something. Foster I was going to say, I would love to have just like Sutton Foster as like a as like a showgirl kind of character yeah, or something. That. And give her a little musical number or something. That would be very fun. I've, cause I, just because I mentioned to you earlier, I've recently been watching clips of her as Reno Sweeney and Anything yeah. Goes. And she's just phenomenal. Like, I think yeah, we just need her in fabulous. one of those character kind of roles. And she does a big tap number. Yes. You know who I think could play Thomas Andrews? Who? But I think he's a bit too young. But maybe if this were made in 10 years, Andrew Garfield. Oh, yes. Would be a fabulous Thomas Andrews. A good Billy Zane character would be any of the Scars guards because they just have evil face. Yes. They have evil <gasps> face. Yes. That'd be scary. Also, yeah. uh, Jacob Lordy from Euphoria. Yeah, he's got like menace vibes. He's, he's got menace he's vibes. He's got menace vibes. He's got menace vibes. You've seen the picture of Rachel Zegler and Jacob Lordy next to each other. No. Because he's really tall and she's quite short. It's oh, that's really fun. funny. That's fun. Um, that's quite fun. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to think of who else. Oh, who's gonna, who's um Ismay? Ooh, Ismay. Oh, I have a bitch. Okay. Just because I think he's he could be fun. I think uh Donald Glover. <gasps> Donald Glover as Ismay. As Ismay? He, I think because he plays um in in the Han Solo Star Wars movie, he plays, I forget the guy's name, but he's he plays Lando. And yes. He's kind of like morally ambiguous. Oh, and love I it. Think he's he's we very fun. Ismay. I think he can I do like it. That too. He can because he can play smarmy yeah. very well. I also feel like David Schwimmer. 
would yes. be a good Isme. Yes. And David if Trimmer. In different direction. He needs to be, like, what? He's got to be in more stuff. I know. I feel like he's, I feel like like he's a producer him now. him as uh, the Victor Garber role. No, he's not. He's not gentle enough. <laughs> He doesn't have a gentle, handsome quality to him. Okay, who's got a gentle? Oh, I want it to be um, Jack Black. Jack Black. Yeah. Oh, Jack Black could be the captain. Yes, that's captain a really Smith. good. That's really good. Jack Black is the captain. I Smith. love Jack Black. I so love him. Much. And you know that he's also a brilliant actor. Yes. Yes. He's phenomenal. <gasps> who's singing the song? Who's our Celine Dion? See, the thing is, like, there's no one, in my opinion, who compares to Celine Dion. Well, that's not what we're doing right here. Now. You can't compare, but. No. We obviously get Celine to come back and record that, but we get a new original song so we can go to the mm -hmm. Oscars. Yes. And who is that? Oh, Lynn Manuel Miranda. No. <laughs> no. I'm past patiently waiting. I'm not his favorite, favorite. It's like, it's like a Lynn Manuel Miranda rap. The ship's going down, but I'm ready to crown when I'm freaking out and I'm found. And I'm exactly. That's what I want. That's what he's saying. Yeah. She's like, and that's all he sang. My girlfriend is getting down there. She's going around and the ship's going underwater. That's literally what I want yeah. from the Titanic reboot. <laughs> I feel like we've done it. I feel yeah, like we've I think it. Yeah, I think we've nailed it. God. I want Jim Carrey in there somewhere. Okay. I don't know who he'd play. He could play a good villain as well. I feel like he can be very messy. Yeah, he could be the he could be the villain. Or villain make Zane. him the guy who keeps spreading all of the uh, rumors about the mummy's curse. Yes. So give him like- He's just like a, a new character who yeah. pops up and says, there's a mummy on the ship. Yeah, like I feel like he could really kill We're that. gonna get a curse. I'm We're gonna, gonna get, get a curse. curse. We're gonna get a curse. Who's gonna be the actress? Yeah. Who's the actress who starred in the first movie of the, the, of the Titanic, the short film that was released like a month after the sinking? I feel like that could be Florence Pugh. Yeah, That that's could be fun. a fun like B-plot too where she has like a breakdown and Florence Pugh could do it like- ah, yeah. yeah, or um, Bowen Yang. Bowen Yang. Oh, incredible. Yes. <gasps> Bowen Yang would be a good Murdoch who yes. shoots himself and falls <gasps> into the water. You're That's so Bowen correct. Yang. That's Bowen really Yang. That's really good. That's really good. He would slay, and you know he'd have fun oh, with it too. And we got to put Noah Galvin in as well. Noah yes. Galvin can be a first mate as well. Yeah, he can be, it can be, he can be, he can be talking about stiffs. Light roller. Who's the, is he the one that talks about stiffs? Maybe. We're going back. I'm not going back. Oh, to yes, 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 That's yes, him? yes, yeah. yeah. That's Noah Galvin. Okay, amazing. And we'll get Ben Platt to sing the song. <laughs> Waving through the Titanic, oh, 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 try to, try to speak, but the boat is cracking in two. And there's no moon, so it's really, really oh, dark. And there's, there's no room on that door for you when right. I'm knock, Ta knock, knock, knocking on, on the, the door. door. <laughs> Waving through the ice fields, oh. That's awesome. Guys, thank you so thank much you so for, much for listening. listening. Next week is our final It's the ultimate episode. episode. It's the final one. We're done with season one. If you have any comments, of course, please email us at truthtanic at gmail.com yeah. or follow us on Instagram. It'll be in the show notes. We have a live show on December 20th at Hot Docs if you're if in you're Toronto. If you're in Toronto, come to the live show. We're going to be watching yeah. the Titanic movie. It's going to be so much fucking fun. It's going to be a it's blast. It's for the girls. We're going to cry. We're all going to cry. And uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be cold. <laughs> so come spend your holidays with us. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you next Bye. week. Bye. Bye.